Hello, I'm Nintendo and I won't be in today's podcast, but in my place will be Connor Eats Pants as the host, and joining him will be Push Dustin, Spazzy D and Smash Chew, with our special guest this time being Artsy Omni from Smashified. The today's topic is the end of Smash DLC. We're going to be going over our thoughts on the Smash ballot, the DLC, and whether or not we thought that Sakurai reached his goal of creating good DLC. Also, while Artsy Omni is on here, we're going to be talking about the anniversary of the Rayman leak from one year ago and how that's evolved his channel since then. It's a very good podcast this time, and I really hope you enjoy it. So see you guys. All right. So our first topic is it has been almost one year or around one year since the Rayman leak first came out. And if you guys don't know, I'm sure you do. Artsy Omni was the genius behind that. Uh, It fooled most of us including myself. So we want him on here to talk about it. How's it going? <laughs> so I know for me personally, the Rayman leak was definitely like a, a big change in Smash DLC speculation because at that point, everybody was sort of like, we're not going to get any more DLC after Mewtwo. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so with Rayman, I was like, the only reason I ever really believed it personally is I was like, this doesn't make any sense. What the heck? <laughs> it's yeah. just Rayman. Uh, and so that was my general reaction. That was everybody else's reaction too on the board that I visited on Nintendo Zone on uh, Smash boards. Yeah, um, it was before the DLC was officially announced. It was um, it was pretty surprising. I remember I was uh, traveling that day and I was constantly on my phone checking the thread for updates, trying to figure out if this was legit or not. And um, there's a couple people that pointed out things here and there, but for the most part, I believed it. Like, I was pretty convinced that it was true. Do you remember which things people pointed out that maybe would... Uh, um, some people did point out the flames. The flames were, like, almost immediately, yeah. Okay, yeah. That was definitely one of the big ones. I remember uh, somebody was that was in the 3D modeling in the boards. I think it was Van Rose who was with us. He pointed out he knows, like, 3D modeling. And so his main point against it was that it didn't look like a 3D model. Yeah, he said it looked flat, which actually was something I, I thought, too. It was I was actually the one that posted it. Was, it wasn't the... Nintendo Zone at the time. It was uh, just a leaks group. It was before the transition over there. And it was on Valentine's Day, I remember, because I was the one that posted it onto Smashboards. I, I don't remember where I got it. It was probably just like on GAF, like slightly before, and I saw it on NeoGAF and posted it over. Um, and I'm like, oh, this is clearly just going to be another fake leak, and I'm going to go to, to uh, Valentine's Day dinner and come back, and someone will like have pointed out eight reasons why it's fake. And I came back, and uh, everyone was running around and freaking out. Um, but what's funny is like, it, it was just kind of the, in my opinion, the the perfect time, the perfect timing, and the, like, the perfect leak at the perfect time, because it had been so long since we had heard anything. We knew Mewtwo was coming, but it was only from that model in the uh, in the 50, 50 Fact Direct. So everyone was just like really, really waiting for something. Um, it was good looking. I, I think um, Omni really learned from previous leaks, <laughs> like how to do it, <laughs> yeah. the kind of the slow reveal, and then some video footage. And uh, I, I think that really helped. And what the 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 moment I was actually convinced had nothing to do with him. It's when Ubisoft was preparing a uh, statement for no apparent reason. I was all like, <laughs> "Why would Ubisoft prepare a statement?" <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I remember yeah, this is going confusing. back farther, but I remember that uh, first time I ever really saw on these work. Besides, I think I probably saw it bra- during brawl speculation, but I didn't really think much of it. But I remember the Klonoa thing around E3 2014, oh, I think it was. I actually really liked that Klonoa model. It was actually like, was like, oh, wow. I would rather have that than Pac-Man at first because I, I like Klonoa and I could Wahoo people. But then I kind of like that in Palutena, but then like disappointment set in. It wasn't real. Did, did Palutena get revealed in that direct or in that? Yeah, I did three shooting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I remember it being the thing against it was that like the name in Japanese was Ike or something. That was the only thing people had against <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, that was really stupid of me. <laughs> but at that Ike thing that happened, you might have had people going for a little longer. Like they might have waited until the game came out before being like. There would have been like a lot of topics yeah. to talk about. I'm like, oh, is Klonoa real? Is he coming? Is there going to be two Namco characters? Yeah. That's true. That would have been a thing. Yeah, I think it lasted about 30 minutes <laughs> before <laughs> people debunked it completely. But it's funny that you mentioned the fact that Rayman doesn't look quite 3D. You put it, you put it think, out at a time where everybody was going to be looking at it. Yeah. And so I think my mindset has always been get like 90% of people to believe it <laughs> because <laughs> at least then it'll propagate. Because I know it's not going to convince everybody because it's not a real 3D model, but 
uh, I think that was maybe like my fifth attempt at a pseudo 3D looking thing aside from the Kirby hats. So uh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. some practice. And I don't know if I'm any better at making things look 3D now, but uh, hopefully enough people find them convincing. I think you've definitely improved. Like um, looking back between um, Brawl, your, bom- your Bomberman from there and the Bomberman that you made for Smashified. Oh, you can yeah. definitely see the huge improvement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Smashified Bomberman, uh, it's probably my favorite of all your Smashified uh, pieces. Ended up really good. I like the, because uh, it, was, it was a reinterpretation. It was the sort of thing you might actually see, you know, in Smash 4. It's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to pull a lot of inspiration from Mega Man and the way they kind of gave him a little bit more of a robotic aspect to him. Because bef- like in a lot of the official designs for Mega Man in the early games, it's kind of just like a, pretty smooth, nothing complicated design. But with Smash, they always try to make things a little bit more high fidelity. So I wanted to try to stay in that sort of thinking. Yeah, I remember during early leak speculation, maybe it was just talking about how like all these leaks are obviously fake. Like no one that's actually good at this stuff is doing it. You were the first (laughs) one with actual talent to try to fake a leak. And it was really impressive. And so it sort of scares me out of the future on like what could happen now (laughs) with people that are coming out of the woodwork with their fake leaks. It's changed everything for sure. There were a couple couple, uh, convincing leaks before that. The Paltana Paltana one. Yeah, Paltana. Yeah, um, there's not a lot of people who have the talent that feel like wasting that amount of time on something. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, the Palutena one was a full model, um, and I, I, there's probably people that still think that was real at this point. <laughs> well, the one thing I think was that was like there's something about the background that like no other picture had the same background look to it. Mm-hmm. I was wondering how that, I never really knew if the, how that came out or if that was something. I think the model looks no, a little I, different I now, but there. I had to go back and look at it. But I remember that was always kind of the thing that kind of helped it was that somehow they were able to get mm-hmm. a picture at a different angle. So it wasn't just like they replaced yeah. Images on top of them, they just somehow had a different. Yeah, yeah and Omni, to, to be completely honest with you, you're saying you, you need to get 90% because it wasn't real, so you're not going to convince everybody. I mean, it could it, give, it could be 100% real and you still wouldn't have convinced everybody because there were people oh, with yeah. the ESRB e- leak until basically, yeah. uh, literally uh, until Schultz reveal trailer, at, at which point they're all like, okay, at this point we can't contest it anymore. I think um, there was even so, still some people after that. Yeah. <laughs> were there really? Lucky guess. <laughs> like, they faked everything else, man. Come on. Really? Were there people really after that? Yeah. Like, yes. I was convinced. I, I was like a doubter for a long time about that one. But I was convinced probably the challenge, when they showed the challenger, the challenger's image, like that was exact to what they showed before. So it was like, you couldn't aggregate at that point. But like, that, that, after showing it's like the same exact pose, it's like, like there's no way this is a lucky guess. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, they just got that one right, dude. Everything else like they that were one, man, like, yeah, that and like a bunch of other things too. Well, it, it was it was because both real uh, Shulk and fake Shulk were based off, based off of Little Mac, so it was easy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Rayman, Little Mac edit, everything yeah. Little Mac edit. Uh, yeah. See, Rayman was uh, a great choice for a lot of reasons because uh, the um the render ended yeah, up looking great trophy. but he's such a an easy character and he already had uh, yep. artwork in game to i guess kind of base it off too so you, you yeah. kind of knew you know like when you talk about bomberman with bomberman you had to imagine how they would kind of tweak it to fit into smash rayman you kind of saw this is what rayman looks like yeah. in smash i mean <laughs> yeah that's definitely the case and i think for most people the characters that we do where there is more interpretation to be done like lilac or or Shovel Knight, characters like that, Bomberman, those are the ones that people, I think, gravitate a lot towards. Because Inkling and things like that, Dixie Kong, there's not a lot of stuff that you have to do to them to make them look like they're in Smash. It's maybe like a lighting change mm-hmm. or something like that. So, yeah, it's definitely characters like Bomberman that get people excited. Yeah, I th- That's why I love your series, dude. So, there's so many, one thing I learned from Smash Regulation, it's just like, there's so many nice fan bases for so many characters, and they're not gonna really gonna get much support. Yeah, that's why Smash Fight's awesome, dude. Because you're gonna see people, their fan bases get to see their character potentially in Smash. I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's the whole yeah. driving factor behind it. Yeah, it gives everybody a little artwork because it is good looking stuff. Like, actually, I think still the best one's the King K. Roll. Yeah, I really like the crystal one because of all the elements that went into her design. That crystal oh, one's yeah. pretty good too, actually. I mean, I can say that they're all good. We're just crazy at this point, but. It's funny that uh, every time we release an episode of Smashified, there's people who say, this one's the best one you've done yet. 
And then there's other people who say this is the worst and the series continues to get worse. <laughs> it's funny because like, we have no idea how well we're doing anymore because some people say it's progressively getting worse. Some people say it keeps getting better. So I have no idea what anything means anymore. Welcome to the internet. It's because people have a lot of personal attachment to the characters too, just like yeah. in the yeah. actual character reveal on Smash. So yeah. if it's their favorite character, if it, actually if it's a favorite character, it could go either way. It could go like, this is the worst interpretation of K. Rule I have ever seen, and it makes me throw up in my mouth a little bit, or I'm just so happy to see K. Rule. You know, mm-hmm. because people have like such strong mm-hmm. opinions on the characters. It needs to look this way sort of deal, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially with Crystal, because... A lot of people are more attached to the adventures design or the assault design, and we went with the command design mostly because that's how they do it in Smash with Fox and Falco. It's mostly based on command. So even though it's actually my least favorite design for any of the Star Fox characters, it's the one that you have to do for authenticity, and it's just difficult, but, you know, whatever makes the most sense. Yeah, I I was going to... This is sort of like a most Smash fight suggestion, but it's just sort of an idea that I had is like, I know most of you guys do sort of different jobs on the projects, but I think it'd be interesting to see you guys each tackle one character without consulting each other and to see how it turns out with each of your <laughs> renditions. Yeah, we've considered doing that at some point. I mean, I think there's going to be some characters down the road that where that does happen. Um, I've got a few coming around. We've we finally actually scheduled like what character's going to come out in what month. So I've got, I've, I'm able to look really far ahead and see what I would be doing solo. And there is always usually going to be some sort of consultation, like, does this look right? You know, peer review and stuff like that. But uh, I think you guys should uh, all do the same character at the oh. same time and not <laughs> that like, would, yeah, that's, that's, that's actually kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. And that character should be off. Simon Belmont because that guy has like 12 <laughs> designs. Actually, yeah, I want to be kind of, that is an interesting idea. I had not thought of actually like doing a competition kind of thing or even just a comparison, like seeing how we no, do not it. Not even like yeah, a competition. You could yeah, like, yeah, all we just live mean, stream like, at the same time. Yeah. That like, I'm just seeing everybody's different ideas of the character is what I mean. Maybe next year uh, for the anniversary we can do that. Um, so how do you feel about it, like, one year later now? Oh, man. I mean, it doesn't feel all that different. I have gotten a lot of tweets this morning from people saying they remember the day that I broke their hearts. So oh. <laughs> there's that. But, I mean, I'm pretty happy that people who were salty about it at first have come around because that was one of my biggest concerns is hopefully people don't hate me forever for doing this. And it seems like there's still like a few mm-hmm. people out there who do, but largely people have come around and like me for whatever reason. We, well, I'm going to say we were considering bringing some of those people on today and being like, come on. <laughs> oh, be, good. That would have been fun. <laughs> it would be so much fun. <laughs> how, how dare you, sir? It's like one of those like talk shows or something or like 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 Springer or whatever that you were. It's like it's like hey, you made the Raymond. Oh, like yeah. here's Johnny. He hates you and wants you dead because you ruined this Jesse <laughs> Raymond in the game. Oh hey, you all gonna have a nice conversation once you be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but he can't throw a chair at him because he's not actually there. You know, that's a legitimate concern of mine. You can throw a virtual chair. Is there a throw chair emoji? There should be, right? Oh, is there? There's a flip table. <laughs> There's flip table, but it's not the same. That flip table is just frustration. Throw chair is, you know, physically hurling angry. a chair <laughs> across the room. <laughs> um. So yeah, you're you're talking about the reaction to the leak, Omni. What what were you more expecting out of that? I mean, did it did you expect it to catch on the way it did? Looking back, I don't really know what I was expecting. I kind of was just hoping that it would get some traction so that people would. Because of the reason I did it was to to get promotion for the series that I was planning on starting, Smashified. And uh, I don't really know what I was expecting to happen. I do know that I had seen Etika cover uh, potential leaks before, or like fake leaks. So I know that was like a benchmark that I wanted to hit. I wanted to see if he would cover it. And uh, I don't really know what I was expecting from there. Like I didn't know if more people would see it. I didn't know. If, I didn't think about the idea that people wouldn't like it, which was really not smart of me to think about, to not think about. But uh, yeah, I don't really know. It's hard to say. So um, what we don't really know, I guess, completely is like, how did like it spread and start? Where did you post it first? Who? Where did you see it start getting traction and all that? So what I started doing, well, I was basing it on the ESRB League largely. So I started by posting some screenshots from it on on 4chan. And I was basically using the ESRB leak as a template. So after a little bit of time passed, I released the video on a fake account, like an alternate account. And 
posted it there. And then from there, some people were kind of like, yeah, this looks fake. It's probably fake. These are always fake. And then they saw the video. A lot of people turned around and said, maybe this is real because this looks legitimate. So at that point, a lot of people were like running it through forensic things, like seeing if there's any weird noise that takes place. And uh, it passed. And that was weird because uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know how those things work, but I guess it made the cut. So yeah, from there, it was just people spreading it around on Reddit and social media. And before I knew it, Ubisoft was like, we're trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> yeah. And so, you never got an answer about why they did that, right? Mm -mm. Not really. And I don't know what they were planning on saying, but after that happened, I was like, okay, maybe I need to reveal myself sooner rather than later because I don't want anything weird or bad to happen to me or anything I like think, that. I think so. about um, that that just shows us like uh, Ubisoft is just so scattered that they probably didn't even know if they gave permission. <laughs> hey Frank, <laughs> Frank is 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 Rayman in Smash? Somebody somebody find Frank and ask him if we if we put Rayman in Smash. Well just, just say we'll, we'll answer him tomorrow. <laughs> Like, like you have to imagine it had to have been like the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> like we put Rayman in here. They're like, no, maybe. Um, <laughs> this looks real. <laughs> this looks like this we sounds did. like something we would do. Well, they did send them the model, right? They like Nintendo right. either asked or Ubisoft sent the model. So maybe there was like, was there a misunderstanding? I thought we were just sending <laughs> that for a trophy. Did they What's take this and here? do something with it? Yeah, they're checking the contract. I can see it. They're like yeah. sitting in there. They're 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 post on Tuesday when it was gonna be is like Rayman is a new character in Super Smash for this Wii U and 3DS. <laughs> and they're like they just think it's real. They just go with it. <laughs> and then you do they're it. excited too. They start tweeting like, "Yep, he's coming. We did it." Yeah, but then that day came around, and then they just said, "Hey, it was fake. Here's the video." And then the Rayman Twitter followed me. So that's neat. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I'd imagine if you hadn't come out and said it was fake, they would have said it was real and been like, ball in your court now, Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they would have. It was so funny. <laughs> We'd have to translate that Feminitsu article, too. I um, I remember doing the translations on um, what the Japanese gamers thought of your league. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Somebody yeah, called me and, like, old, a self-satisfied um, old man. Yeah. Apparently, I look old. Doyo, tall. <laughs> <laughs> By Japanese standards, you do look very yeah. old. They're all, <laughs> Apparently. I don't even know what they do over there to make them look perpetually so young. Uh, I did want to tell you that self-satisfied is not always a bad thing. Oh yeah, that's true. Like um, I had um, a friend that was like obsessed with guys' um, doya kao. Mm -hmm. So she would always ask me to do it for her, like a self uh, smug look or something like that. Yeah. All right, our next topic is our thoughts on the Smash ballot. Now this sort of ended about, well, the DLC ended earlier this month. And as far as I know, we haven't really had like a true big discussion together on the podcast about it. So I wanted to get everybody's thoughts here. So what did you guys think of the Smash DLC? Um, it, was, it was good. It was good. Uh, moveset uh, potential obviously kind of took forefront, I think, in in a lot of Sakurai's uh, decision-making. I, I really um, wonder with Bayonetta what they meant by number one out of uh, like viable characters. <laughs> like I wonder, I wonder yeah. what... Actually, I, have a, I actually have a theory about that. I know you have a theory about that, but I have a theory about everything. <laughs> hey, I'm, I have an article. I have an article that might go up eventually. Um, yeah, because it, it seems a little odd. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, overall, I, I'm happy with it. Um, like uh, ninety percent of people, I was really hoping Wolf would uh, eventually get in, but you know, also whatever. Wolf. What do you mean get in? He's still coming though. Oh right, yeah, that's true. I forgot. I forgot. Surprise <laughs> Never reveal. Never forget. <laughs> Um, it was interesting. Um, it, it's funny that I see a lot of people or specific people, I should say, kind of celebrating the fact that it wasn't one of the, uh, you know, characters that everyone thought it was going to be. Um, and at the other hand, I see a lot of people, uh, that are mad that they're like, this is a character once again, referencing Bayonetta that didn't ha that didn't seem to have that vocal of a fan base. How did, how did she get in? So, um, it's interesting. I, I think one thing for sure is that Nintendo sure got a lot of, uh, market data, out of this that they're probably going to use in all oh, sorts yeah. of games in the future. So, Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, I, and on the realizable part, I think, so kind of my theory is you could look at all the other characters, especially um, <coughs> Korn and the uh, the returning characters. They are based a lot on characters already in the game. And if you look at all the DLC characters, they're all humanoid characters. So they're all kind of like 
can take from each other. So I think a big reason when they say reliable is that they're characters that can kind of work off of others. A lot like how they talk about Wolfbeck and Brawl, like he's a kind of a Frankenstein character. Um, so I think that's kind of when they say realizable. I think that's issues. So you take something like King K. Roll. I don't think King K. Roll would have been in looking back. Um, it's because one thing we didn't consider um, was King K. Roll doesn't really have somebody you can base him off of. Like he's just kind of like he, he's just he can different actually. I feel like use a lot of day to day's animations, like and general skeleton. Like I think I, he I, could, I, but but I think he'd still be different because like he's a lot different still than King D. I think he could. I think you're right. I think it's just it's it's still kind of hard because the heavyweights are just in themselves still kind of a unique frame. I, I mean, I, I think with with uh, K. Rule in general, it, it was more of a, a question. And I, I know K. Rule fans will hate me for saying this, but mm-hmm. uh, of relevancy. That you know, when you look at a character, Perhaps, like yeah. you know, that's kind of the opposite of Corin, who doesn't really have much. But I mean, besides being easy to create, as far as um, having somebody to base it off of, and having the potential to be a unique character, which which uh, he is. But I mean, Corin got in because hey, this is a, a relevant character. We want to kind of include a new character, and that's kind of the way they went with the first party. For all we know, um, Sakurai was saying was thinking that he wanted the ballot winner to be a third party character. Because mm-hmm. let's remember that, once again, yeah. Corrin is not that. Corrin was, hey, um, we, we thought it would be neat to put a, a character from an upcoming game in. Looking at all of the characters that fall that that have come out recently or are going to come out soon, this one seems to be the one that makes the most sense for when DLC is being released and for having uh, the potential to be a unique character in the way that I want. I feel like that was very much Corrin. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was our only first party newcomer. Our, all of our other newcomers have been third party, so maybe that was his thought process. We really, you know, unless we have a sit down interview with Sakurai and he actually discloses that, which even if we somehow had number one, I don't think he would get number two. Uh, I don't think we'll ever really know. Um, well, he did say in the Fire Emblem 25th anniversary interview that um, he did like working on those interesting projects like Do and stuff like that. Um, like I think he enjoys w- collaborating and working with other content creators. Yeah, I, I think Cloud DLC was is like the perfect time. Yeah, I think Cloud was a very that. fun thing for him. Like when you just kind of <laughs> read his interviews yeah. and his thought processes on it. Going back, I really wish that uh that Rayman did did like somewhat maybe win because then I feel like Omni <laughs> would just be redeemed in the eyes of people that hated him, dude. Like they would have oh, like yeah. they would have said that he did it. Omni, you did it. You got Rayman and Smash because of the votes. <laughs> I was hoping that would happen. But that's a curious but. thing, though. It's like, I think Rayman probably would have had more votes, even if you see the numbers, because the problem is, and this is the issue with Bayonetta, is that one reason why it's a little skeptical of kind of how they came up with it is because Bayonetta, you look at the game sales, it's, they're not that great. Bayonetta, I think, I think you, you pointed this out to me. I think Bayonetta 1 was like 1.6, 1.7 million, somewhere in the neighborhood, probably less than 2 million. Bayonetta 2 probably not even on the radar. If you look at some other, like, even among Nintendo characters, most of their game sales have sold significantly better. And even Rayman games have sold significantly better. I think Rayman Origins probably sold, uh, I'm sure, over 2 million. I'm not sure exactly how much it sold, but <clears throat> I don't, it did pretty well. It did well enough for them to make a sequel, uh, not have problems publishing it. But Bayonetta didn't have that same issue. Nintendo kind of had to come and save it, essentially. It so might it, be just an issue of uh, third-party support then, because Ubisoft wasn't really isn't really supporting the Wii U right now. Like, they even have a couple of unreleased games. That's that's yeah. possible, too. I remember when the trophy was revealed. Yeah, I, I thought, I was like, you know, maybe... I was making a joke. I said, maybe the trophy is here because they were going to make him a character. And then when Ubisoft pulled their game, they're like, nope, you get trophy status. <laughs> no, I think, I think it was just because they were publishing in Japan when that happened. But I also think, too, as far as Rayman, I'm sure part of it was it's hard, it would be harder to get into model Rayman versus Bandana. Where Bandana, I'm sure, takes... I haven't looked at it. I don't, I don't have Bandana, so... Um, where she probably uses some stuff from Zero Suit Samus, I'm pretty sure. Corn actually does take moves oh, yeah. from other characters. Um, yeah. She's, she's, she's very, very much her own character, and even her stance and proportions are so different from everyone else. It's, mm-hmm. I, it'd be hard to say she used much. I guess I feel like her back air is kind of like Zero Suit her Samus. Her back air or up air looks like they could be. I haven't looked at it. I know, because Cloud has a similar animation site, but they're not the same, or Corn actually... Corn's animations are almost verbatim. Oh, yeah. Corn like Co- uh, has a lot of the Fire Emblem... Stuff. Yeah, like Corrin did take stuff, like legit. I think some of the other characters may have used stuff. Like I'm sure Ike was probably a base for Cloud, but they weren't exact. Like they probably just I, I don't know, like I still think it requires a, a lot of tweaking and I'm sure oh no, I, like I agree that. with you. I'm sure I just like, think it, even if they're just borrowing assets, it's not like the job's done and they call it a day. No, know? I agree with you. 
I mean, I, I don't think it was just that. It was just simple. Oh, I was, oh, we have this character in like a quick time. But I think it's just in order to create a turnaround that was sufficient because these characters had pretty quick turnarounds. I think they had to use some base versus Mewtwo. Like Mewtwo they still Mewtwo, took like six months. I don't know about that because Mewtwo took Mewtwo. They showed Mewtwo off in November. He didn't come out till like April, and the other characters didn't have that issue because even Bayonetta they had the had, roster. I mean, they had the team from the base roster from the base game. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, the team did shrink after DLC. Right, but the characters didn't have as big of a. Um, but you said some of the DLC characters, as far as we know, they may not have had. They they probably were not as slow. I guess is hard to say because like they probably were quick. Came out quicker than Mewtwo came out for sure. Because um like Lucas was shown off pretty quickly after. Like, of course, he's taken direct from another character. Um and I'm sure the other ones. Um I'm sure um like Ryu probably came out pretty quick too. Um and you might think like okay he's probably decided around maybe February. I'm just kind of guesstimating this one because there's almost no way to know. But it didn't take mm-hmm. him as long. And I don't think that just those three characters took as long because they could borrow from other characters. Where Mewtwo kind of had to be built from the ground up. And I think he even said that in an interview that was the issue with Mewtwo. He didn't specifically Mewtwo, but it's pretty implied who he's talking about. Was he couldn't just take stuff from Melee. He had to make it from the ground up. Yeah, he was talking about Melee and 64 content that had to be like... It had had to be uh, recreated. The Melee content in particular was too old to be used, is what he said. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I feel like you're making a lot of assumptions. I mean, if if they were just going to create DLC, then they could have just brought Wolf back easily because he yeah seventy percent Fox. Um, as far as and that's going to get me in trouble with people listening too. But that's what Sakurai said. It's seventy percent. No, no, it's true. It's seventy uh, percent of the effort because yeah. No, I, I think I think part of that too is because they didn't want to do more old characters. I'm sure she probably agree with the push because seemingly right. they don't. They they, they kind of made Ryu and I'm sorry, not Ryu. Roy and Lucas, like they're, those are the old characters. Those are the guys that were like the um, the returning characters. And of course, I think too they use a, they could use a lot more than Wolf could because Wolf still had to probably get more use than him. Versus like Lucas is straight from Ness, and Roy is pretty much uh, Marv. Like I said before, I think it was between um, Lucas and Wolf, and Lucas just won. Maybe it's because Wolf was worked on in the base game, and Sakurai didn't want to work on him as DLC. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, and again, I am taking a lot of assumptions. And uh, and when um, Push Dustin did the uh, perception of DLC in Japan, when he took all of that, Lucas was the number one most wanted veteran above right. Wolf. Like that that that's once once that happened, I started posting that everywhere. I'm like, see, see, you guys are all like, what's going on? I'm like, it's Japan. They wanted Lucas right. more than Wolf, and they got him. So <laughs> I wanted Lucas more than Wolf too. Just. uh going on the record there but i still wanted to always confused I, I, me, to like yeah. so, I'm I really done. wanted a uh, snake because uh for a lot of reasons i feel like metal gear adds a lot to and the weird thing is now when you look at our third party roster with bayonetta and cloud and ryu yeah snake fits so much better now than he did in brawl yeah, snake snake makes a lot of sense yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's like frustrating that to not see him in and uh he adds a playstyle. He's, you know, the heavy weapons guy. He adds, you know, a lot as far as iconicness. And also, he adds a, he adds Konami into the roster, which meant that I probably would have gotten a Bomberman me costume. Now, <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> mm, <laughs> oh, yeah, really wanted it, it? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like right now, too, you're kind of arguing that there's no way being an could have won, but we, we don't know. And I've actually had an, argu- an, uh, an opposite argument kind of with Push Dustin a while back. Where mm-hmm. I was saying that the, that I thought Bayonetta, he, we both thought Bayonetta, you know, had to have scored high. That's what they said, and we're we're taking Sakurai on face value there. But Push is saying it's just a popular character. I was saying no, people voted for Bayonetta because Bayonetta two was a a Wii exclusive, and it was kind of people are almost seeing her as a Nintendo character because of the promotion. And Push is like, Not no, she's just actually. a popular. Yeah, Push was just saying that, no, she's just a popular character. And my counter to that mm-hmm. would be like, so you're saying if PlayStation All-Stars 2 came out and they had a vote for characters that Bayonetta would win because she's such a popular character? I'm like, no, if the people were just voting off a character they thought was popular, it wouldn't, like, in, in all of gaming, <laughs> like, take Nintendo out of the equation, I don't think Bayonetta would have won. I think Bayonetta won because people saw her as a relevant third-party force on the Wii U. Like, and that's just my opinion, but... No, I totally agree with you. I just think, I think part of it, too, is I think one promotion, I think they were looking for a third-party character. I think that's just an element of promotion. Like, much like in Mario Kart 8, you see they have the other Nintendo characters for this game. They are having like those. They won more third-party characters. Um, kind of like you said. I think I think, I think think if it was not a Wii exclusive, uh, I don't think Bayonetta would have even been close. She would have probably not even been on there. 
Um, yeah. I had another point, but I forgot it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I just think it's really, really smart that they didn't show. Like people were like begging, like show us the results. Thank God they didn't. Because yeah, there'd be chaos be so in the mad. streets. I imagine. Yeah, gosh, sure. I, would that, <laughs> I would bet that probably K. Rule and Inklings and them are probably up there. Maybe in certain areas above Bayonetta, people would be so upset. Like they would be freaking out about it. So it's smart that they didn't do that. I when yeah. uh, well, when I've, I've I've been saying this like for months is that like we also overestimate the size of the Smash fan base online. Like the game sells ten million copies. Right, and but you know it doesn't sell ten million copies. Bayonetta. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just saying, but or Fire Emblem, but look at the I game. know, I know, I'm, but I'm saying that like we can't judge the results that we have, right? But, and say that they're but once again because you're, you're basing it off the Smash fan base, which is a small fraction. I, I mean, and I get that, but I'm just saying like, mm-hmm. um, in in the 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 general gaming, you know, the the mindset of gaming, it's still like not a big franchise, so it's not like. Okay, if Dante had randomly won from Devil May Cry, that's a bigger a bigger franchise. You know what I'm saying? If Chris Redfield had won, mm-hmm. yeah, if I can just Chris Redfield. Actually, Leon, actually, I'm and cool, and Leon I feel Kennedy. like I'm talking bad about Bayonetta, and I really don't want to. And I, I enjoy no, the character. No, no, no. I'm glad she's in. I, I I'm, and uh, you know, it's not even like I'm really trying to rationalize it. Um, we're I'm just trying to talk about the different processes that could have gone through and um, reasons for maybe this character and not that character. And I think. I could clearly see her have been the number one third party out of the characters that are remaining that are feasible. Yeah, that, that exact uh, discussion that you were talking about with uh, you're not upset. We'd have an entire article about that called like Salt versus Criticism, right? Yeah. About the DLC. Yeah. And uh, I remember I did a reaction video. It was my first thing to like the th- to any sort of thing. And it was mainly a joke. I was like, kind of like, I don't really do this, but I'm going to do it for a joke. And I'm pretty like really – Corin and I'm like Bayonetta. Are you kidding me? I was like, they're not my kind of characters. Like, I don't. I'm not too excited. And I just got like blasted for not liking the characters. And I'm like, you know, I'm not unthankful. It's just that like I'm not. They're not my cup of tea. Hey, you yeah, see that's, my that's the other thing too is that people. <laughs> some people get a little too uh, defensive over mm-hmm. Sakurai's choices. Yeah. Just as there's people that for no apparent reason seem to hate Sakurai and everything he does. There's people on the other side that like no matter what, like. People are allowed not to like the characters if they don't. I I um I like Bayonetta. Um, kind of mixed on Corin personally. Um, uh, the more I play with him, the more I kind of like him. But he's still like I feel like I, I would have liked the character. That I mean I understand Water Dragon transformation long reach, but just felt a little different. You know. Um, yeah, the transformation stuff is just sort of like a gimmick. Like it doesn't really change the gameplay. Really, it's just sort of like. Well, yeah, move. but I mean that's that seemed a lot of the newcomers were like that. You know. True. Yeah. Sure. Um, and, and that was fine, you know, I, I just would have liked a character that, I, I don't know, maybe somebody a little more cartoony or something to kind of, kind of break it up. Yeah. So uh, I felt like, what do you think, uh, Omni? Uh, I think kind of what you're saying about people kind of getting angry about your opinion on things. It's, it's annoying to me that whenever you say anything, even remotely negative about a character, like I'm not interested, you have to kind of set a disclaimer. It's like, it doesn't mean I have, that uh, it doesn't mean I'm not thankful it's annoying that you have to read that into it because it should be yeah. understood that for most reasonable people, just because you're not interested in character doesn't mean you don't think it'll be a good character from a gameplay standpoint or something like that. But that's yeah. just a, my pet peeve. Anyway. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the military thing. Like I don't hate the military. Like, yeah. But overall, I think I kind of agree with the sentiments about Corin sort of being a little bit too much fire emblem. And I, mm-hmm. that's not to say that I don't enjoy playing as Corin, but I think my expectation was let's get some. My I really wanted Inkling. That was my yeah. my pick yeah. for the non ballot winner. Is hopefully something because I mean, if you're going to promote a game, I guess Splatoon was just as uh, important to promote. But I guess because that game was already it already blew up, then there's not as much incentive to try to promote it as like compared to Fire Emblem, which probably doesn't get as many uh purchases as splatoon but i do wish it was something a little bit more diverse but i do understand from a development standpoint it probably was a lot easier to implement corin in the time frame that they had something like splatoon would have to be really thought from the ground up because how do you implement a shooting character into well, smash and the, and i the can't even think of it yet. <laughs> yeah so i understand but i i and as far as the whole DLC goes overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It, it went as well as I 
should expect it to go reasonably, but the dream was inkling for me or Rayman, of course, but you know, it's, it is what it is. And it's, it, it turned out well, I think. Um, by the way, on the 3DS, um, Shiny Quagsire, he revealed that um, Korn was actually the last character in the character order. Hmm. So yeah, Bayonetta was decided so, on beforehand. Or around, or the same time. It, we don't exactly. I think well, Bayonetta I mean, may yeah. have been a ballot slot, though. I think she may have been decided to just a blank slot for the ballot. And then, of course, probably Cloud and Reaver. That's true. Uh, her, her slot could have just been but ballot slot. At the slot. end, like, Sakurai might have decided, like, I want to keep this roster fresh. Like, I want to get a new character in so that way it doesn't get outdated. Well, right, yeah, because there was that new slot added. So that might have just been kind of more of a last minute decision, like, hey, we have a little bit of time. Like, we don't know one way or the other. Yeah, once again, we just. Sure did spark a lot of conspiracy theories on Bayonetta didn't actually win. I like I said, I, I could easily see Bayonetta having been um the highest third party that they could negotiate. Yeah, um, I think that's I think that's pretty much partly what it mm-hmm. is. Among right. I mean, there's a lot of decision went to it. I'm not sure. I, I think it's hard to also simplify like, it down to like I think it's things. yeah. Realizable also means like one that's relevant too. Yeah, like when I think of characters like K. Rule and things like that they're not going to generate as much buzz as characters no. like Bayonetta. So I don't know. I, I might like, argue that a little bit just because I think, I think K will might've been bigger. It's hard to say. Cause the problem is like, the problem with said, Bayonetta was, it probably does create more buzz. Actually. I yeah, probably, it probably does create more buzz, but as far as actual general interest, it's hard to say. Cause I mean, one example, like cloud, even, even though I think cloud was a good choice in the end. Um, like that, if you look at like, like with Twitter, actually it's kind of like the Twitter hashtag, like it, the cloud hashtag jumps for a day and then goes right back down. So it's like it's kind of a cool thing to talk about for a day, but it doesn't really create sustained discussion. Where a, a character like K. Roll that people actually like, genuinely might have, it's hard. It's hard to say because I'm kind of talking about the realm of what ifs. Um, but just given kind of Ben as actual overall presence, I think it might have been. Like I'll use this example again. Like I have a coworker. He plays 3DS games. I showed him a picture of the K. Roll me costume, and he's like, "Who's that crocodile?" Most people don't know K. Roll outside of the hardcore fan base. Yeah, that's the um, same with me. Like um, with Bayonetta, with um, Cloud. Like I told some people who are who don't even play games anymore. Like they used to play games as a kid, and they were hyped for it. They were like, "What Cloud?" Like I love Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, we and we had this conversation you and I pushed with uh, when we interviewed uh, James Montagna from uh, Way Forward. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of talking about a lot of the same stuff because hey, we're all Smash fans. We all. You know, and if there's one thing Smash fans like to do, it's rehash the same topic over oh, and yeah. over and over again <laughs> yeah. for days, Guilty. for weeks, forever. We, we got we got to get to the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah, but we were talking agree. about how uh, one of the things with K. Rule too is even though Donkey Kong Country, the, the old Donkey Kong Country games were huge games, um, he didn't have a very big presence in them because he's just the final boss. It's not like Robotnik yeah. Yeah. and Bowser, who you see all the time in the games. And that's a really smart thing that uh, Nintendo and Sega did with those characters. Like in the first Super Mario Brothers, at the end of each world, you basically see Bowser. Um, you see Robotnik at the, end of each, at the end of each world. So that way you think, oh, I, I have a connection to him, even if I'm not somebody who beats the game. Mm-hmm. And K. Rule really didn't have that. Unless you were uh, a good gamer that actually finished the game, you didn't really see him as much. And I think that probably is. I think there's plenty of people that played Donkey Kong Country that were more, I guess, you know, kind of casual gamers that just really don't have any idea who he is. <laughs> That's a fair point, actually. Yeah. Uh, my my theory was always that um when the Mii costume came out, my theory was that especially after I heard about the results of Bayonetta, is that K. Rule did probably top the list in America. And Sakurai just sort of, and the whole team was kind of like, you know, we're not really going to do this one. And so they put in the Mii costume as sort of like compensation almost. Right. That entire patch seemed like a lot of uh, Mii costumes that are like runner-up consolation prizes. What were the other ones? Yeah. <laughs> I know Krom was one uh, of them. Actually, Baridi probably. Yeah. Well, there's someone else I'm thinking of too. I can't think of, well, maybe not Takamaru, but I think Ashley was popular in Japan. It was Baridi? Ashley. Oh, Ashley. Baridi too, but. Okay. I'm, um, I'm, 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 no lie, I will be salty in the next Smash game when we get Viridi and we we don't get uh, Hades or Medusa, because that's that's gonna happen. I'm okay with Viridi if she <laughs> plays like I'd love to see a character that's like a dot character or like a debuff character. I feel like Viridi could actually fit that, like tangle people with vines or do like 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 put flowers on people's heads. 
I don't know. I'm surprised it's not been Smash, but it's in like a lot of other games, like that kind of um, character type. A, l- a little bit of a spoiler for uh, a conversation that um, Connor and I uh, had where we're doing a, a new little video segment called Character Corner where we just talk about characters from franchises we'd like to see in Smash. Um, I, I did bring up uh, K.K. Slider, and I'm all like, well, he's basically a bard character, right? So he should just have all sorts of uh, – he should sing Spells. songs and he should just do different status ailments on people. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny, actually. <laughs> he sings a sad song. The, the character's slow all of a sudden. I'm all like, it's, it's perfect. I was going to think about it as like a support character from a MOBA. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know how it work in Smash. <laughs> but in Smash Brothers. <laughs> he's excellent on teams. <laughs> oh, God, he'd be great. I'd love to see a character like that, too. Um, and not to change something a little bit, because we talked a lot about the ballot, because I know they mentioned the ballots for the upcoming Smash Brothers game as well. And of course, we don't know the whole mm-hmm. results. We know, according to them, say Bane and the One as realizable characters. But what do we think, how do you think it's going to affect the next Smash Brothers game? I think the data will absolutely be used for the next Smash game whenever it happens. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, like, like you said, it does say that on the Japanese version of the poll. Yeah, I think did. K. Rule in particular, I think he probably did do well, and that's probably why he did get the costume. I think if there is another Donkey Kong Country game soon, he will probably... That's the thing. I don't think it'll just affect Smash Brothers. I think it's going to affect other Nintendo franchises. I think he'll probably be in mm-hmm. it. Um, and by the way, K. Rule also is more the type of character because he's more someone who appeals to hardcore Nintendo fans and hardcore Smash fans. Yeah. That would be an E3 reveal, I exactly. feel like, for like debuting the game. Like like when you see the, you know, the, the Brawl trailer with the six characters, if they were going to do that for the next Smash game... K. Rule would probably be one of them. He'd probably be the Meta Knight, you know? Ridley would be the Wario. <laughs> <laughs> he would even fart. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like a fat Ridley. Just like that's a, that's a compromise. <laughs> just like a fat comical Ridley. <laughs> it's like a Ridley. Draw that, listeners. Or, Ridley's really got to let himself go, hasn't he? <laughs> just straight up, he'll be a Wario clone, actually. He'll be a heavier Wario. <laughs> He's even really too big. <laughs> I just want to let it be known that I knew exactly when I said Ridley that that was when it was going to go off topic. I just, I'm the master of it. That's all you gotta do, bro. Like, you guys should uh, smashify Ridley, <laughs> even though he's already in Smash. Actually, hey, you, you all should. should. That actually definitely got a lot of votes for it. <laughs> yeah, this is just to tell Omni what to do podcast. No, we have a lot of data as well. A little we get, bit of Smash we get a lot discussion. of data like that. We have our own sort of ballot on Twitter that's constantly going. So, yeah, it's constantly just replies from me going like Ridley and Proto Man, and that's it. <laughs> No, I do hope that the, DLC, the the ballot does inform the next game because I'm really curious. <sighs> That's the thing. It's like I really wish we knew what was on that ballot, but obviously they're not going to show that. But that's definitely going to be yeah. huge insight into the next game. And even if a lot of the characters that were at the top aren't as relevant, like I think characters like Shovel Knight probably did hit pretty close to the top on the American ballot. But yeah. I mm-hmm. imagine by the next Smash game, it's not going to be as relevant unless... Yacht Club keeps updating the franchise, but I know Yacht Club is uh, promoting the hell out of that character more than like I've yeah, seen any goat relationship with ever. Nintendo too. <laughs> I mean, that's smart. They're a new game company, and yeah. they, they hit gold. So, um, yeah, by the way, Omni, um, I, personally, I'm not like a huge fan of the idea of indie characters in Smash, but you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I've I've kind of warmed up to the idea of anything in Smash at this point. To be honest, um, you know, as long as it's not like non-video game characters. I think that's still that's yeah. still the line I draw on the sand. Goku? Yeah, but... Ken, I, Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Jr. I feel Smash like Brothers. Shovel Knight t- picked up a lot of steam, and if it, if it had gotten the game, I would have put a lot of it onto Smashified, because Shovel Knight was a Smashified when the ballot started, and I really feel like this was a very front-loaded ballot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do kind of wonder how much influence Smashified had on the ballot, if any. We like to think that it did have some influence, but I don't know because we don't really reach as many people as, you know, at a I think you know, certainly like did, dude. Like, with, I, I remember when, after you guys would release a character, which one was it? There was one, uh, I, th- I think it might have been Bomberman, I think, where after you released it, I just saw people on like Smashboards putting it as their avatar, and all of a sudden there were so many Bom- Bomberman supporters. I imagine that, like, with other characters and that happened, people would be like, you know what, this looks cool. I'd like to see this in Smash. And they went and did it. So I imagine you guys had some sort of influence, definitely. It was my avatar. My avatar has, ever, has uh, never not been Bomberman, though, on Smash ports. <laughs> <laughs> but I think um, the Smash Divide videos, they get like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views. I think they do pretty well. The early ones did. Um, as we go down the line, obviously, the the characters we do now aren't as popular as the ones that we did at the start, and that's sort of by design. But as a result, the views are sort of diminishing. Like, not as many uh, people are 
excited about Crystal as people were for Shovel Knight. So that's just natural. It's yeah. to be expected. Right. I can say to you, Omni, is welcome to YouTube, man. This is yep. how it works. Welcome to the yep. club, dude. This is <laughs> one year, one year of uh, experience now. So, but, um, you guys have also like expanded into other projects besides Smashified. Yeah, but- definitely. I mean, we uh, we announced on Twitter that we're starting a new series related to Smashified called Trophies, and uh, that's mm-hmm. going to be just sort of a lot more freeform of a series where we do sort of whatever we want to do. It doesn't even have to be a character per se. It could be items or something like that. So that's sort of an exciting prospect okay. because as as popular suggestion starts to fade away we have to kind of use our own passion as a driving force for the for the series so that's Mm -hmm. i don't know we're sort of wanting to transition more into 3d work so i'm starting to learn 3d for a lot of reasons and uh hopefully that's uh something that could translate into bigger things and i've had this sort of dream in my head that if there's ever some sort of mod like popular mod to smash 4 that there would be a collaboration with Smashify to make the visuals, like design the visuals, but that's just mm-hmm. a dream. <laughs> you got to hit up uh, Sonic. Not just Sonic. Um, there, there are a couple people now. Um, yeah. Uh, SMB one two three W six four GB at uh, on Twitter is the one that's doing all of the now, the models. That is some branding. <laughs> yeah right great branding but you know what if, if you're modding a, a popular nintendo game maybe you don't want to have a, an easy to remember name <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but yeah the, the last thing i saw from him actually uh, on twitter was they're they're getting to the point where they're starting to import stages into smash wii u which is fantastic it's crazy That's how fast awesome. it moved though for sure because i think like even during brawl like they only it took them a few years to get to even like like just do stuff like that I think it has to do, do with the fact thing. that the game is so open for DLC. Oh, it's yeah, okay. It, it actually, it actually, interestingly enough, if you add character slots to it or stage slots, it just resizes automatically. Yep. Oh, <laughs> like really? You, you don't have to do anything. It goes like, it goes up to a ridiculous number too. Hmm. It's kind of funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> now we can now it, it, speculate. Sakurai really played eighty characters for this game. <laughs> oh gosh. Sakurai was censored. They stopped him before he could finish. <laughs> no, what happened? Come true. No, what happened is here's the real conspiracy theory. He actually has like twelve other characters done, but Nintendo's like, no, no, we're gonna put that on the NX port. Money. Nintendo mm-hmm. will let them release it. King K. Rule was always done. He was the first one Sakurai wanted to do King K. Rule. <laughs> Nintendo stopped him. <laughs> Blame Miyamoto. He wanted to put in wave dashing. He was censored by everybody higher up. Yeah, because Miy- Miyamoto hates uh, DKC. Does he really? No, no. <laughs> I've misquote. heard a lot of people say that. <laughs> well, the weird thing is, like, I, I like we had a in our chat a little while ago in our um, source gaming chat. We had I had like an argument with Anvil about um, Legend of Zelda because people get so obsessed with the number of characters because they have this slot oh, mentality, yeah. like uh, yeah. this many spots on the roster. And I'm like, Zelda got like an obscene amount of content in this game. In this particular game, it got so it didn't get any new characters, which kind of sucks. Zelda could definitely use another character or two. Um, although I think with the ones it has now, it's pretty well um, represented for what the series is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. However, like if you look at the number of stages Zelda got, it's like number two to Mario. If you look at the number of like new items it got, it got like uh, the wind bellows, the the cuckoo, the um, the fairy bottle, the beetle, um, and uh, uh, we're missing more. There's, there's definitely another I one. I swear, there's more we're missing. Deku nut. That's from Brawl. Well, it always had the Deku nut, but like it, it got yeah. a bunch of items in, um, yeah, in, in Smash Four. It got a bunch of assist trophies, and it got a lot of stages. And I'm like, you know, it's not all about characters too. A lot of people are just so obsessed with characters because it is, you know, kind of the focus of the game. But there's a lot more in the game than just characters. In fact, um, I, I think as far as DLC stages go, uh, Zelda... Did Zelda get the most? Yeah, Zelda got two. Maybe Mario. So, um, Mario and Zelda, I think, got the same. They got two. Oh, that's each. right. Right, my Mario Maker. Okay. Mario Maker, yeah. But Zelda, Zelda, I'll say this one last thing. Zelda's kind of a weird case, because it's kind of like... If you look at the characters we have, they're kind of like... Because I agree with you. The characters we have are kind of like perfect. They're like the main Zelda characters. The problem is Zelda games, look at them. They've sold incredibly well, like Ocarina Time and Twilight Princess. I think both top seven, 7 million. I had to look at the, the, the exact numbers. So you could argue, okay, yeah, we could have a character from there, because you look at a lot of these other characters, even even Bayonetta including. Like, those games have sold better than some other games in there. 
Um, even better than other Nintendo games, so it's kind of like a weird argument. It's weird. It's more like a great period we'll probably get to cross when we get to the next game. Right, well, I mean, if you're going to focus on sales, though, um, the next Mm -hmm. big franchises really are... um, Pokemon needs more. It just... It does. Mm -hmm. Pokemon, actually, ironically, is actually the one that where it's kind of like weird, because Pokemon could actually use more representatives if you talk about just sales. (laughs) Yeah, Pokemon Pokemon could use more representatives based off sales and based off representing what's in the game. Like, it just could. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's true. Pokemon's it's about like 710 more. Right, yeah. Right now it has the same amount as Fire Emblem, and I like Fire Emblem, and Fire Emblem's a, uh, a franchise on the rise, and it's a pretty big franchise at the moment. But it is not Pokemon. It is nowhere near Pokemon, and it has the same number of characters. And as opposed to like Legend of Zelda, where you're like, well, Fire Emblem could use those characters because it represents different parts of the franchise, different character classes. Same thing with Pokemon. So you can't even like mm-hmm. use that argument with Pokemon. Pokemon probably should have like ten characters. I don't even like Pokemon, by the way. I'm not a Pokemon fan. I'm just <laughs> just, just spitting truth here. These are facts. Bingo, anyway. <laughs> um, I think the issue with Pokemon though is finding characters that are important enough. Because you get to a point where it's just sort of like that's a Pokemon. Some people like them, some people don't. And You're so like, I think this like one looks like a chandelier. Let's put him in. Yay. Yeah, like right now we already got like I think the biggest hits of Pokemon. I Me, mean, Jigglypuff is just sort of a staple to Smash, but like Charizard, that's like the most popular starter ever. You got Mewtwo, who was the villain. Everybody loves Mewtwo. Lucario was like the new, like I would say the newest, most popular Pokemon ever since Gen One. He's probably the most popular guy that came out ever since Gen Four. And then uh, who else is in there? Is there another? Mewtwo. Greninja. Uh, Greninja's Greninja. new. So yeah. Yeah, I think Pokemon representation is is done well. I think. And the hard part about Zelda is, aside from the ones that they already have, like there's aren't there aren't that many characters that are recurring. So it's right. hard to Tingle. say whether or not Tingle. the characters are important. And Tingle is one of those characters, of course. Um, but there's a lot of mixed feelings on Tingle. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, like a lot of people say Gear Him, but he's in one game. A lot of people say Sheik, and well, Sheik is in the game. What am I saying? Um, Impa. What other characters? Vati, but he's. He, actually, he's one of the more recurring characters, but yeah. it's more of a if Capcom. If Midna appears in another Zelda, Zelda game, I could see Midna. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's what true. she's waiting yeah. on. And, and Maybe it's, she it, might because of the yeah. There's um, rumors Amiibo. that she'll that the new one is connected to Twilight Princess in some way, right? There's rumors, but that's from the Amiibo. The Amiibo carries over. Back to my original point, um, it's Legend of Zelda could use more based off sales. Uh, Pokemon certainly could use more based off sales. Kirby and Donkey Kong. Those are the those are the four mm-hmm. that are kind of under, underrepresented compared to the size of the franchise and Animal For sales, Crossing. Probably actually. not Kirby as much. Kirby's the games don't do that great. They do extremely well in Japan, though. Yeah, but overseas they don't do as well. Yeah, well, Kirby's, Kirby's like right behind favorite. Zelda, though. As far as Kirby's best weird, selling. Kirby's a ton of games and ton of potential character. And just most has. of the representation from Kirby comes from when the games that Sakurai has worked on. Yeah, that's true. Listen, I had. Smash you. We can we can have a, a conversation with uh, Nintendo. In fact, you should settle it and smash with him. Uh, we should, we should actually. Let's do that. We need another topic. Let's do that. <laughs> because okay, I, I I had like like tooth and nail, and I and once again, this is funny because I usually defend Kirby like I'm going to do now, but he was trying to say that Kirby is a bigger franchise than Donkey Kong. Uh, no, what? <laughs> no, so you, no. You can you can have this. You can have that with him because I'm interested to see because sure. I didn't want to. Because I actually no, think Kirby's a big franchise. Um, and if you go, but if, if you go by sales, like mm-hmm. I think, I think per game sales are definitely low or uh, way lower. But it may be only higher. He has a couple, Kirby has a couple of like three million plus games. It's not like they're all tiny. Mm, yeah, games. It, yeah. It's not like it's totally like like minuscule small franchise, but it's not like gangbusters. Yeah. Well, something that I think is interesting that a lot of people really notice is that a lot of kids that were born, I would say, between two thousand one and like two thousand eight. That's including my younger sibling. He doesn't really know Donkey Kong outside of Mario. outside of Mario, like party games, and so he he knew Kirby. He grew up with Kirby and all that, but he didn't really realize that like Donkey Kong was separate until they had a Donkey Kong. He's like, "Oh, a Donkey Kong game? That, that's pretty cool. That's a good idea." I'm like, "Dude, you have no idea." <laughs> <laughs> that I I think that hurts a lot of the characters that are connected with uh, Mario. Donkey Kong yeah. for sure because he just kind of gets lumped in, especially like in Mario Kart. We uh, we're currently you know do, we're cu- currently looking at what what would happen if uh, N- Nintendo did a uh, an expanded roster for Mario Kart, made it kind of like a Nintendo All Stars. 
And one one thing you think of is, does Donkey Kong st- count as its own series then, or is it just still part of Mario because it was already already part of Mario Kart? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's but, a weird franchise because it's like a spinoff of Mario. Like the entire franchise is a spinoff franchise from Mario, but then it became its own thing. Yeah, so it's hard to to really say. It's even worse for Yoshi. It's even worse for Yoshi. Oh yeah, because Yoshi games yeah. still use you know Koopa Troopas and they fight Bowser and Kamek. It's it's like so clearly entrenched in the Mario universe and which is why on every podcast and every video video recording we do, I'm going to say this until somehow some way this happens. Yoshi needs to absorb the subcon super Mario brother two enemies. He needs to fight Wart. He needs to fight Perdo. He needs to fight. I'd that. Yeah. I'd see Wart come yeah, back actually. Cool. He already fights shy guys. Like it just needs to happen. I'm so tired because it's, he doesn't have his own series. He has like, like he borrows Mario's enemies and sometimes even baby Mario. Like it's so closely tied in that it's, it's like ridiculous. Like at least Wario really got far away. The Wario land series, mm-hmm. uh, even the generic enemies are really different. The plots are different. Everything's different. Um, and the Wario is just like completely different from anything connected to Mario, you know, uh, Donkey Kong, unfortunately, even though it's different because he had, kind of this hiatus of being it's really the gamecube era that was the other thing i was talking about uh with nintendo compared to kirby because he was talking about how donkey kong hasn't been doing well for a while i'm like it's literally only the gamecube era i'm like if you go back to n64 and then to the wii donkey kong country games sell great but that period of when the wii when the gamecube was nintendo's main system and then the gamecube and the Game Boy advance that's when donkey kong didn't um like really I do blame the congas I, I blame the conga drums oh, yeah pretty much man jungle beat was awesome. to blame, but i love donkey kong jungle beat that was an awesome game but yeah donkey kong and yoshi both are still so tied in like wario is but like i don't know i, I feel like people have a much easier time separating wario from mario than they do yeah. even donkey kong now i mean would you guys agree with that i agree oh yeah definitely i'm over here nodding like you can't see me nodding when you're doing that so guys i have a question what were we talking about because i i don't know the smash smash ballot <laughs> the, the yeah, DLC yeah, ballot and how it influenced <laughs> though yeah so <laughs> it worked out well our our two points well our two there were two points see we had thoughts on smash ballot when sakurai goal was create good dlc did he succeed i feel like we sort of hit both of those in there and we went into like a character discussion so i feel like that was pretty good because we're smash brothers fans and that that's what we do every conversation evolves into into k roll should be in this game there aren't enough zelda characters that's how everything ends yeah Yeah. well that's the thing about smash is that when you're talking about smash you're basically just talking about nintendo as a whole it's it's Mm -hmm. basically what smash is nintendo the game yeah there's so many elements all right so our next topic is a bit of like a it's sort of similar to the last one, but it's different in the same way. So one of Sakurai's goals is to create good DLC. Did he succeed? And now when we, when we say good DLC, we're not talking like, were they good character choices entirely? That that too, but we'll get to that later. What we sort of mean is like, is it a good model for DLC in terms of price point, in terms of how it was released? Because Sakurai said in a long time back, he's like, I don't like DLC. It's a scam and all that, but he ended up doing it anyway. And so a lot of people are saying it's overpriced and all that. And we wanted to take everybody here and just sort of talk about that and see what they think. So we'll just go from left to right. I'll go with uh, Spazzy here. What Spazzy well, okay. on that. First of all, uh, Sakurai didn't say he didn't like DLC. He said he didn't want people yeah. to think that he was selling an incomplete game. Um, and even that might be a oh, little okay. bit of a misquote. Um, I'd have to find the actual quote. Because he, he actually you know brought out brought up, uh, I think it was, was it Fallout DLC? Yeah. And how he, he liked that. He likes DLC that adds to the complete game. He, what he was always worried about uh, was that people thought he was holding content back. He didn't want to, you know, okay. pull a Capcom, if you will. Um, <laughs> and I, I think as far as that goes, I think the – and I think Push This and I had a conversation about this and alluded to it earlier that we think that maybe – there may be things that were planned for the base game, but because he actually worked on them in the base game, he didn't want to bring them back as DLC, which would be like the Dr. Mario stage, maybe a Rhythm Heaven character, maybe even Wolf. We don't know. Like I said, we I think that would be a very interesting conversation to actually have with Sakurai on, on his – actual thoughts on what should and shouldn't be dlc but as far as what was in this game i i think it was for the most part fairly priced um i think characters uh were decently priced i i think compared to other fighting game dlc uh certainly they were right in line with that i think stages were fair my biggest i, I had two issues actually with it number one um the me costumes I, I know they're optional whatever but they're still too much money like they just were you should have been able to buy like a bundle of four of them for a dollar or something they were just way too much money 
Um, I would have also liked to have seen real me, uh, real costume choices as opposed to just me costumes. But you know, that's uh, goes a little bit further out on what they could have added. And this is more about, I guess, the uh, distribution, right? Is what we're talking about. Um, and the fact that there were bundles offered, but bundles didn't actually save you money. At no point did I feel pressured to buy a bundle, and I probably would have. Even if it would have cost me more, like, I, I don't know, it's just kind of the way my mind works. I think a lot of people are like that. If the bundle saves you more, if it gives you, like, all the me costumes and everything um, at a decent price or it gets you a discount on um, all of the characters so you buy them as a bundle, I think people are more apt to do that. And I think it was strange that they didn't. But overall pricing and distribution, I, I thought, was well. It was done well. Yeah, I think I would largely agree uh, with all of those points. I think I – don't, I don't really have a lot of experience when it comes to DLC because I don't play – that many games compared to a lot of other people. So I don't really have as much of a comparison to make, but aside from issues with just the overall experience of downloading DLC from the eShop, and that's sort of a whole another story. That's another can of worms. But I think, I think they did a good job. I think on the tales of Mario Kart eight doing really great DLC, I think they did uh, something comparable and I think it was a good, it was a good DLC. I, I do agree that a lot of stuff was overpriced, though, like the me costumes. For some reason, for me, I have to have everything that they ever made for the game. So I bought literally all of the costumes that I've, I'm probably never oh, going to use them, but I bought them anyway. So I've, I guess I've wasted no, some money. That's the but, exact same with me. Yeah. But I never used the me's, but I have them. Yeah. I think the me costume should definitely have been a lot cheaper because you don't really get that much utility out of them. It's a completely aesthetic difference and i guess there's obviously some development time that went into it so you have to shoulder that but yeah i think it was a good dlc overall i think they would have created some good uh like uh, what's the word like good intentions with the fans if they made the meat costumes potentially you know either cheaper or maybe even free yeah because i mean they're, they're a lot smaller especially if they're bundles like i feel like the meat costumes should have a significant discount when it comes to bundling them with other with actual characters and things like that yeah, if you guys hear me right now, I'm actually adding up all the price of all of it. It's coming out to well over sixty dollars for all the content. And that's just on one system. Yeah, if you did both systems. How much is the bundle? It's close to a hundred. Yeah, because I think even back when I calculated before cloud, like the Me Fire costumes are pretty much all of it. I think for a lot. They did add um of all bundle in Japan. They like, have, they have the, the old deals here too. I think. Yeah. Don't they? Well, no, they just have all the characters together, I think. But Push, how could they call it the complete DLC bundle if they haven't released Wolf yet? Right? Exactly. <laughs> See? Holding out. Uh, holding out hope. But, I mean, you have to consider DLC in, like, a different plane, though, right? <laughs> when when you're <laughs> when it's coming to, like, content. Well, you consider the base game. That's obviously more than came out in DLC, but the DLC costs more in total. And so, like, for a lot of people's minds, that they're thinking, well, that's not fair whatsoever. This should only cost 20 bucks total or something like that. But it really is like the idea of like more content coming out after at least costs content. more on them as well. Right, because I, I would argue that um, the base game is very much a complete and total game. There's more characters, more stages, more everything. And maybe not as many modes, which I would have liked to see in DLC. I would have loved to see expanded stage builder, perhaps some bonus modes, break the targets, anything like that. And we didn't see that. Um, but I think part of that has to do with the fact that they were developing on two systems. And if you combine... I said this over and over again. If there was one game, if there was one Smash Brothers game, and let's just say it was for for Wii U, and it had all of the modes and stages from the 3DS version, it would have seemed like a much bigger game than Brawl, uh, minus Subspace Emissary. But I mean, it, it the fact that they ended up breaking it up into two games really uh, is what I feel like makes it seem a little incomplete. But it is a complete game. It's not like they were selling you, you know. And maybe that's why they didn't want to sell you a single player mode because then people might have been like, "Hey, so now I have to pay for the single player mode," you know, that should have been in the game. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I don't have a problem with paying for that, and I, I do think a lot of it was the me costumes. And even if they had done stuff like, "Hey, all of the Mega Man themed me costumes for a dollar," that would have been reasonable. You would have gotten like three Mega Mans and zero, you know. <laughs> I guess Mega Man. Mm-hmm. So we'll move on to push Dustin next on his uh, thoughts on the price of the DLC. I agree with uh, what Spazzy and, and uh, Artsy Omni has said. Um, one thing about the Mii costumes is, is it's a shame that you can't really use them on For Glory. Um, yeah. Like you said, they don't really have a lot of use, which is, um, again, a shame. Um, if, like like Spazzy was saying, since they were developing for two versions, like that kind of, not only... Um, 
decrease the amount of content that we we could get, but also increase the cost of it because they had to make both versions the same. And so like when you have two different systems that aren't compatible, like you, you have to program, it increases program time like exponentially. Um, and then Sakurai has also said like whenever they add a new character, it's exponential development time because they have to test it with every other character combination after that. Yeah, I'm honestly super impressed that they even get, like, that's something that people don't really talk about, is how impressive it is that the DLC works consistently without too many glitches when it releases. Because, I mean, that's, there's so much stuff to test. And even in, like, I guess four months, I would say, it probably makes it take a character. They're getting all these glitches out of there pretty quick. Like, with Corrin, of course, we got some stuff that's sort of strange, but I'm impressed that they even did that much stuff. Yeah, like, a lot of people think that, like, the game should be only be balanced for 1v1, but... Smash is like a multiplayer game. Like now you can play it with up to eight players on the Wii version. Um, There's a lot more that goes into balance and then just 1v1, no items. For sure. So Smash, what do you think? Um, I'm going to try and cover kind of all of it. Because I think overall, yeah, I think it's good. I think the prices were pretty fair. I I think the price uh, for individual characters is pretty good, like five bucks per character. I think that's pretty reasonable. I think that's the most people would probably want to pay for individual character. Um. And of course, some of them are stages, so I think they could have the extra bundle with it. Uh, it's just, I think overall it was good. I think the weird thing is kind of the Mii Fire costumes. They're kind of repeating a lot of everyone else's sediments. Um, my only thing, me personally, I would have liked to have seen maybe another Tentendo character too. I do think, I do want to say, I think looking at it, at people's reactions, I think Cloud was a good choice. Because I think a lot of people legitimately like Cloud in the end. Um, just looking at some people. Like, yeah, that was definitely. The other one, um, and Cloud and Lucas seem to be the most popular, actually. I feel like, I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But just looking at people's reactions are good. So overall, I, I think kind of what everyone else has said, <clears throat> the game is a pretty big game regardless. And I think the reason for me is even if I don't like a lot of the content, for me at least I got a lot of things I do like. I do like that Mewtwo and Lucas are back. Uh, I do like the Mario Maker stage. And of course they brought a lot of other stages back. So there's still a lot of stuff in there that I like. Uh, so I think overall it was good. I think it's probably a better model because it did. I think exactly what you were all saying, what Sakurai is trying to do. It's trying to make additional content. And that's really how DLC should be. I think if you go back with a lot of the other controversies like Capcom, it always felt like they were just trying to make you pay for stuff they already did rather than, you know, giving you a fair shake and being like, okay, here's some, here's the full game and here's some extra stuff that you pay more for. So I think it really worked out in that way. Well, on DLC as a whole, one of the interesting things is a lot of companies do something different now with just microtransactions and Smash didn't take that route in terms of small content bites that you could purchase. So a lot of people were suggesting maybe if they ever did this in the future was making just a ton of alternate costumes and maybe me fighter costumes and putting those out separate and giving the characters out as a free download um i don't know yeah there's a lot of different ways they could go about it in the future i mean even look at like how street fighter 5 is doing things and basically having you pay for the um a little bit less for the base game and then just constantly just having a stream of dlc for who knows how long to supplement the game that is kind of free but it's kind of not free (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you, you were talking about like modes that were sort of absent from Wii U version. Yeah, this is isn't a fighting game or Smash at all, but I play Halo, right? And so one thing that they do is they release monthly content updates every month. And one of the biggest requests in the beginning of the game is like, you know, we don't have much color options for our characters. And now this next free content update next month, they're adding in tons of new color options, which you don't really expect that from a DLC. I just expected like new weapons and maps, but they're changing up like the base game to add in features that people wanted that were missing. So really that was something that maybe could have been done if they took a different route. And Splatoon kind of did that, like with the constant updates and Mario Maker too. Yeah, and I know a lot of people were complaining with Splatoon about a lot of it being on disc, but it's not like it was being, you know, it's just more of a content distribution method. It wasn't uh, being charged yeah, for. I complained about right? that. <laughs> I don't really have an issue with that. And then later on, they actually I, did introduce a lot more. I mean, do you guys ever look at this roster and uh, just think back to when the uh, game launched and how everyone was uh, took some Sakurai quote out of context and thought we would have less no- uh, characters of the same numbers brawl? That, yeah, that always happens. We did that stuff during brawl too. People are such pessimists. I don't get it. Like they're like, you know, this is probably the last Smash game ever. We're never going to get another one after this one. It's like, no, it makes so much money. They're going to make another one, guys. No, Come they're on. going to. This is, one did I, quite well. Yeah, with or without Sakurai, they're going to do another one. It's just people get upset. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's kind of funny because I guess in Brawl we had, I think, what, like 18 newcomers when you can uh, count Pokemon trainers separately. And this game we had 21 newcomers if you count the Mii Fighters separately. Plus... Um, 
I, th- I believe so. Are you counting DLC? Yeah, including DLC. Because I think um, the base game had less newcomers. Yeah, than the base game did. Well, I'm counting DLC, though. D- DLC yeah. had quite a few newcomers. Plus, yep. you had 21 newcomers. Here, I'll, I'll it, count it is right 21, now. you're right. Um, I checked it. You can count them. There's 14 new characters. It's including the two clones. Um, and then you have the three meat fire costumes, and you have the four new characters that are DLC. So there's 21 total. Right, and, and so you have 21 plus you have the three returning from Melee. So you have 24 characters that were not in in Brawl in this game. Mm-hmm. And you cut five? You cut five and you added 24? Is that is that it? Because uh, Ice Climbers... Yeah. Sn- uh, no, 23, because Lucas was in the last game. Ah, thank you. Um... But still, I mean, the point remains. If you look at the net gain from uh, from Brawl, all we lost was uh, Snake and Wolf, which were sad. Ice Climbers, which is also sad, and two Pokemon. So we lost five. <laughs> that's not that's not too bad. In fairness, at least like, part of it was if you look at the Brawl. I think what they did is um, they added more content after the fact, or tried to push more content. Where in this game, they kind of had to scale back because of itch- issues. Because we know Ice Climbers are cut. There's a theory that the Rhythm Heaven character might have been cut for some more reason. We don't know. Just going off Kamatsu, if Kamatsu is true, we'd have four kids probably will cut for the same reason. Um, right, so and that's kind of a, the data. Yeah, yeah that's kind of the like interesting the... opposites to them. They were able to kind of like, in that, even with the more characters in Smash 4, they kind of had to scale back due to limitations. So there could have been more characters, and there could have been less cuts. That's just what I'm saying. Uh, Sakurai did say that um, most of the characters made it through. Like, he's, um, I forgot his exact word in. Um, and of course, if we translated this, um, it was uh, something like only, like most of them did get through. Like there wasn't that many cuts. And if you include Chrom, yeah, then yeah. But what I wanted to jump into was the idea that this is just sort of like almost like a new mini topic. Is Smash is getting to the point? I think um, when we're arguing like newcomers, Smash Four versus Brawl, where there's not as many obvious choices on what they can add. Like with Brawl, like you had the obvious. You get, like we st- we got to get Warrior. We got to get D to D and Meta Knight. It was very obvious what we were going to get. And with Smash 4, we started sort of hitting a point where it was like, we're sort of, we might start to scrape pretty low pretty soon. I don't know. Especially we'll when it comes have, to Smash 5. Agree with that that he's, he's been saving Toad for years. You know? Toad, saving Toad, Toad is like years. legit. She's Toad. probably been the game a long time ago. He's, he has Toad in his back pocket for the day that there's nobody left for Smash. That's that's my, that's no, my theory. No, Peach on Toad. has Toad in her back pocket. Actually. <laughs> 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 no, but what I mean is like, I th- I, what I'm trying to say is like, if you look at the roster now, you could look at it and say that's Nintendo. You got a pretty good roundup of what you need when it comes to Nintendo and sort of what makes Nintendo important and all right, that. Right, six that's Fire Emblem characters. Say. Got it. More Fire Emblem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Fire Emblem. The reason I disagree with that mostly is because there are a lot of characters that aren't done yet, and there's a lot of new characters that have been created. Because again, if you could say that the next game, you obviously I can easily kind of name a lot of characters. You have Isabel or even Animal Crossing in general have a fight. You could probably easily add two characters in that series because it's so popular. I think um, Happy Home Designer, the spinoff, probably did at least two million, and New Leap is about seven. So the series is pretty popular. You have characters like Toad. You can do more in the Zelda series. You could even do more of the Star Fox team because we have Star Fox Zero coming out soon. You have some new series. You have like Xenoblade Chronicles X. You have Splatoon. Uh, you have I would have liked Elma so much more over Corrin. I'm I would have. Sorry to interject. No, no, I'm totally with but, you on yeah. that one. You also have classic characters because you could have done Takamari. You could have done like Sheriff. You could do Excite Bike, Balloon Fire. You have a lot of characters still left. It's just that. As you keep going, it's, you're going to rely more on new characters. And this game did definitely rely on new characters. Because you look at it like most of those characters had a game pretty recently. Or were just totally new. Like obviously Rosalina and Shulk, We Fit Trainer. Um, Little Mac kind of got a revival. Palutane in the same vein got a revival. And of course, Lucina and Dark Pit are both new characters. El Robin, I'm proud of him. So a lot of the characters are just new. And that's probably what the next game is going to be. You're going to see a lot of new characters. Which is about well, kind of Brawl- a new character as well. Brawl seemed to be about fleshing out ex, uh, existing franchises, mm-hmm. and this game seemed more about uh, introducing new franchises. Yeah, and that's something that Sakurai did say at the end of Brawl in an interview that we haven't translated. I think yet. he mentioned it on the Dojo too. It, it is there on the, on, in the All Star post. You mentioned it briefly, right? And I mean, th- it depends how they want to go in the next game. Personally, I've said this before, but I think characters that have first party characters that have in game roles, um, and also have me costumes, I feel like are probably on Sakurai's mind. Uh, Ashley, Takamaru, Veridi, characters like that. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Isabel. I think those are all characters that uh, we Isabel's probably gonna be the look next at. Be, Quote me on this. Yeah, Isabel will prob- be the next game. <laughs> probably. Although I'd rather uh, K.K. Slider or... Uh, yeah. 
or maybe even Tom Nook. I don't know. I don't know. I don't mind Isabel though. I really like uh, KK Slider's uh, me costume. How he fact how he shoots out of a guitar. That's weird. Yeah, I was just sort of thinking off my head, thinking what we got. But yeah, you guys are right. There's definitely more that we can put in the game. We're not going to be scraping the barrel any, soon. Anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, yeah, especially I was just talking light. <laughs> In the future, right. far, maybe Smash 5, Smash 6. Well, that, that's the thing, do? too, is like, you know, and Inklings, you know, 100%, 1,000% Inklings will be in the next game. <laughs> that's just yeah. going to happen. Unless, like, they release Splatoon 2 and nobody buys it. And it sells three copies. If that happens, maybe. Like, it's the worst, buggiest game that's ever been released. It's like Sonic 06 times 12. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a Splatoon single player only game. Or it's just it's a platformer adventure. I might still buy it actually. I did like the single player. It's um based on the Amiibos. <laughs> it's an Amiibo that, board That's game. how you do it. It's a cool series. Board oh games. god. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it depends on how they want to take the franchise. But I guess in that last interview, um, when he's talking about the end of DLC. Sakurai basically says that he doesn't want to change Smash. He's like, I don't want to make it like a full 3D fighter or what was, what was the other thing he said? Uh, Push, you might know a little bit better than I do. I don't quite it's, remember. He says that he doesn't want to change the formula because um, people are already happy with the formula and that the way that he can kind of keep games fresh is by adding new characters. Right. That was like basically his whole point on the in that article. Right. So, I mean, yeah, sure, you can make it a full 3D fighter. Sure, you could change you know how characters are done and how clones are done but if sakurai stays in charge of the game for the next game i don't think that's going to happen and that's why i almost think like just building straight off of this engine um for a, like a port yeah just like start from a port just yeah. port it for nx and start adding things start adding stages start adding characters is is fine with me uh what do you think, Omni? We don't have you on, you know, all the time. You're the guest here, so maybe it'd be nice to hear. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> your your opinion on that. Uh, well, one question I sort of have is: Do you guys think Smash has reached a capacity where it's going to be difficult to to make the roster bigger in the next game? Like, do you think there would be instances where there's like less of a net gain in in characters? Yes, on the net gain. No, on they're going to run into problems because. Now, kind of the MOBA era we've entered a little bit, they have hundreds of characters. I don't know if that would be feasible. Like, that's yeah. possible. But I think I th- basically, yeah, yes, I'm now. It's kind of another thing about it. Well, yeah, fighting games are a little more difficult to balance. But if they build off of this game, if because you have to, because ba- the thing is with the MOBA, uh, it, I feel like it's much more about the high end characters. I feel like, fi- I don't know. Like, fighting games so much more about one and one. It, it's it's different. That's true, and they're probably more... Dope. With a MOBA, you just sort of start out with the character's class and, like, what they're going to do, yeah. I think, when they're developing the character, and it sort of all falls into place with the balance. Yeah. I don't know, but... um, I, I And I think, yeah, I think fighting games are, are a lot more fine-tuned, especially because it's all about... These sort of games are about Twitch reflex and, and frame data and things like that. You know, it's very... It's a lot of minutia. Um, I... Th- I think we'll see less uh, newcomers overall. Like even if they were to just port the game over and use the game, um, use the Wii U version as like a base. I like if you look from Brawl to Smash Four, and, and if you don't count the DLC, then we got less newcomers. I think that trend will kind of continue. Like I, I would probably only expect like eight to ten at max. But if they wanted you DLC, um, if they, but if they, then if they did DLC, then there would be like more. Um, cause when you add more characters, it's just going to become very, very difficult to balance them all with each other. Um, and it's, there's a lot more fine tuning and testing and, uh, Sakurai's a perfectionist. So like, it's not easy to just create a character. I think for me, uh, I think if they're going to make another smash game, my opinion is I think they should definitely keep the framework of smash Wii U because, in my opinion, I think it's the best balance that they've achieved up to this point. Like Brawl was yeah. a little bit too slow and a little bit too casual based or casual focused. Yeah. And then Blame melee the Wii remote for that. Yeah. And then melee, you know, there's melee. But I think <laughs> and then this there's would melee. be the game to pick for 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 a framework for another game. And that would definitely cut back on how like if if they constantly reinvent sort of the engine behind the game then it's going to always take a long time. But yeah. I do think they have achieved a really good balance with this one. Yeah, and I hope um, Dr. Uh, Sirkan Toto's rumor is true that um, oh, yeah. Bandai Namco is working on the next game because I think Band- Bandai Namco did an excellent job yeah. with Smash 4. 
I oh, am. definitely. They've got so much experience with that sort of dynamic of fighting games that it's. Uh, I, I don't know who else I would trust to sort of shoulder that that burden. Yeah, Nintendo and I have an entire discussion on the channel about that entire leak. You guys can go check out if you haven't seen that yet. Plugging it. <laughs> Plug in. Plug it in. Plug <laughs> check in. the link below, guys. <laughs> Exactly. Free uh, tacos if you check the link. It'll be on the show notes. Because... <laughs> As you know, we can't afford free yeah. tacos. Yeah, but they don't know that. But, uh, <laughs> free it's free sort of, e-tacos. I thought of this idea. I'm not sure how long this conversation will take. But when Sakurai mentions he doesn't want to add anything, changing up the game, would, I, I'll ask him when I think like 3D Fighter and all that. What would you guys like to see like as a change in the formula for like a future release like in terms of like a mode or something that you would like as an option to put in the game? Probably should just add a new move because actually, if it's interesting, just one quick thought. Each Smash Bros. game has added like a new move of some kind. Uh, mainly, add the four B brawl as a Final Smash. You added customs. You could do something with that, like pressing the A and B button alone does a new move. So maybe that. That's probably about it. Modes, of course, always kind of want to see new modes. So whatever they do is awesome. And I uh, just as as a quick rebuttal to that, I, I feel like if you add another button. You get something like, you know, I don't know if you've played a lot of PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, um, which I enjoy, but it's not as intuitive or simple as Smash. Like, that's the thing about Smash. Smash is a very complex yeah. and hard game to master, but it just has two buttons. And they're... Yeah, Smash was made to be simple. Fair enough. Right. Mm, I like you know, it. I like, you, I like could, you could you could completely add, like, a third button. Uh, almost any controller at this point that people are going to use, especially since I don't even know if Wii Remotes are going to be, you know, a thing in the next system, are probably going to have... Uh, that extra button if you wanted to do that i wasn't saying extra button i was saying just a b like pressing them together i mean yeah i, I understand what you're saying i i, I just feel like it, it, it's even that starting to get to a point where it's too many inputs for for what smash is supposed to be but anyways go on and and what sakura how sakura designs games because even for kirby or kirby's air yeah. ride what i would like to see added personally if they ever did something somewhat changing the formula would be to add in a like just a mode for the competitive players to like have like instantly have their settings ready and they just have like a competitive rule set, like restrict stages and all that, just to sort of have that for them as an option separately from like the base game where people just want to play for fun. You know what would be awesome is we have Omega stages if we had uh, Alpha stages. And what an Alpha stage is, is basically a simple or a hazardless version of a stage. Yes, that was all that I wanted. And yeah, like uh, it, it would it would be so easy bad. enough because they kind of do that anyways for eight player Smash. And you know, you just keep like one particular transformation or one form. Or remove the hazards, and it's by the way that still wouldn't make uh, every stage competitively viable. But I, I'm yeah. the type of person that I don't even really care too much about competitively viable stages. But I do every now and then, when especially when I'm getting serious and playing one one v one, I like having simpler stages so there isn't as much of the flying man punching me in the face. Yeah, I think for me, uh, when it comes to another Smash game, one of the things that struck me about some of the newer characters, especially going towards the end of the DLC is that there's a there's a layer of complexity to some of the new characters that isn't present with some of the more original characters like especially Bayonetta the the fact that if you hold the A button and it adds another like nuance to the way that she attacks like it's mm-hmm. it's completely on a different level of input complexity than a character like Mario and sometimes i feel like it's a little bit uncohesive in that way and i wonder if you could bring those elements into other characters just like subtle ways to add a layer to make them more of mastery that right you because if you look at characters. if you look at newcomers that are added each game <laughs> there's there's yeah more much more to them look at somebody like look at donkey kong to diddy kong and brawl you know <laughs> if it, yeah yeah marv to link right exactly or you know because even brawl had a lot but then smash 4 took everything to a new level with Smash Even characters really that though. you might not necessarily think right away are that unique. Like, um, We Fit Trainer. Right. We Fit Trainer is just has so many little things. First yeah. of all, just the poses and everything by themselves are unique. But the fact that she can buff herself and has two moves that heal, that's like completely changing the, the complexion of, of that character. There's no other character that does something like that. Villager is just like, and Villager and Pac-Man are just like weird characters. They are actually, <laughs> Yeah, and you look back at like Game and Watch, and Game and Watch is a weird character. But Game and Watch is a weird character that follows much more standard Smash rules because of when he was created. You know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, one thing on the uh, about uniqueness of characters and how they feel is uh, Mega Man. For a lot of Mega Man fans, like myself, it was really refreshing to see this character yes. brought in a way that was very true to his old games. You can set up your control scheme 
to play Mega Man like a Mega Man game, which is really cool. <laughs> I did that one time. It was really fun. You can actually have like a Mega Man fighting game. Mega Man especially is a big point of that. Like he, him and Villager is just very out there. Yeah, Villager's really weird. One character that I, I think of like in in the way Omni is saying is Samus is very much a result of being in Smash 64. If Sma- if Samus was around now, like if Samus had never been in Smash and was introduced in this game, that would be a completely different character. Just like insanely different because it would pull so much more from her actual games and from uh, the different ways that she played because the original character was just kind of weird. Like even, even the charge shot doesn't really work how it works in Metroid, you know? Yeah, definitely. I never really thought of that, but I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of differences in like the, the characters that are introduced in each game. There's a different approach to the character's design and how they treat like the character's heritage and how they pull moves from their history. It's a, uh, it's interesting to see, and I wonder if they could actually sort of go back and sort of unite or better unify the that sort of approach to the characters in the next game, and hopefully not in a way that completely reinvents the character, but uh, some characters I think could stand mm. to be reinvented a little bit, like Ganondorf. But Ganondorf probably the most obvious for sure. Even Toon Link, though, I think, too. Like, I think you yeah. have some things you need to him as well. Yeah, I think Sakurai's a little too afraid uh, of isolating uh, fans of characters sometimes because I, I think sometimes yeah a full revamp you know let's go back to street fighter 5 look at ken in that game and that's a that's a character that's a fighting game stable look how different he is like it's it's fine he's still ken you know yeah definitely i agree um i don't know how many people here are actually following street fighter 5 at all no, but, uh, i know i, I know what you're <laughs> talking about yeah i am like yeah, yeah that's completely true i think when it comes to reinventing a character like that it's almost like a net equilibrium kind of thing like you lose a character sort of but you also gain sort of a new character. So I think when it comes to Smash sort of reaching capacity when it comes to the roster, that's a good way to sort of change things up if they're not thinking of like increasing the roster by another 20 characters, then maybe they could just go back and rethink some of the older characters and uh, that could be an interesting way to go. And it's not like people who liked those characters before won't necessarily like the new one either. They could just have to relearn the character. They could do um something like um what they did in um was it Capcom versus Street Fighter where they have different styles or like Mortal Kombat I should say oh yeah the Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat does that yeah, really Mortal well Kombat or does, does that. a different see and if you did that actually then you could actually limit the roster by including clones in that like you could do you could have one slot and it could be Marth style or Lucina style or Roy style. That's cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And it just... Uh, but you're not really limiting in the functional roster. You're just limiting like the, the screen size of well, the Well, I mean, I understand that, but that's, a, that's another concern too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, and, and, and if you did that, actually, you could also set customs on your profile that way, which would be interesting. So... Oh, yeah. So you'd have it and you'd have... Um, let's just say like... Let's pretend that uh, Roy right now didn't have the Luigiification of his moves, where it would you know kind of change things a little bit. Um, as uh, and like it was just stats, so you'd have like Lucina stats, uh, Marth stats, and Roy stats, and then you could assign customs to them, and then you could probably still, if you wanted to, play as Marth with any of those play styles, or play as Lucina with any of those play styles, or play as Crom with any of those play styles. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I feel like that's something they could definitely do if they wanted to. Maybe that would be easier to develop than making an entire separate character. Although I don't really see how completely. I don't know. Yeah, I'm you know I'm just I'm just throwing things out there. I mean they they can do a million things. No, yeah, definitely. Um, but see, that's the difference in Mortal Kombat. It's more about the play styles and less about the characters. This is like supposed to be an all star roster, so people definitely want every as many characters in. Yeah. So it's it's a little different. Um, yeah, I'm looking just at the the newcomers in Smash Four right now, and there's just like everybody: Bayonetta, Bowser Jr., Cloud, Corrin, uh, Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt's another weird character. Um, Greninja is probably the most standard character out of all of them. And Greninja is also kind of a little weird, just because of his hydro pump and how that works as a recovery, and you can get people with it. And Shadow Sneak's pretty unique, um, and also he's a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know. I've been I, I'm fighting for another for like a real ninja in Smash. Ugh, I want I want Ryu Hiyabusa. He's one of my last like wanted third party. He kind of really hasn't made a lot of real ninjas. No, no, like, because, you know, and people were saying that, like, Takamaru, but Takamaru is a samurai, like, his entire fighting style is completely different. You can go invisible, that's about it. 
Yeah, and he uses, I guess, shurikens sometimes, but that's not mm-hmm. like yeah, his his actual sword yeah, his fighting weapons. and everything is very very samurai, not very ninja. Uh, one thing I would add probably is like I enjoy like in lo- un- unlocking content and stuff like that. So like uh, probably a single player mode where like you like progress through like not like a story like subspace emissary, but like it could even just be like a text story or something like that. I don't know. Like I'm a fan of like the classic like Mortal Kombat climb the tower kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like going through and like one by one challenging different opponents and stuff like that. The Tower of Smash. Um, yeah, Tower of Smash. <laughs> yeah, what happened to that? What happened to that? I thought that was supposed to be a uh, be one of our modes. It was real. I saw it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um but like just like unlocking like customs that way instead of like being randomly yes. generated. I think the game could have benefited from that. Right, yeah, the way customs were done in this game was... Okay, That's there's another thing. That's another thing I would like. I would like customs... I, I don't mind unlocking custom moves, but I don't want to unlock duplicates of customs. Um, I don't mind unlocking equipment that does different things, such as smooth lander or you know quick batter or whatever. I do think the stat ones are dumb. I don't think that stats should be tied into equipment. I would like to see maybe a stat slider that um you know like a lot of uh, they have it in a lot of sports games and fighting games and things where if you increase yeah, that was something that i thought yeah of. if you increase one stat it lowers another stat so you can actually modify your stats and it'll remain balanced but it's not based off of rng you know yeah my issue with that though was that for a game like smash it almost seemed like there would always be a best option if that was the case that's gonna be yeah. any game though to, like do, for what to do your character but you know that's like saying there's a best option between marth and roy um, well, do you want to play a zoning character or you want to play a rushdown character? You know, it's it still comes down to play style. Unless, unless yeah. you're doing it competitively, which I don't think customization should be allowed competitively anyways. <laughs> yeah, I will yeah, say the only thing I'll say... What, go ahead. I'll say, sorry, I was saying one more thing, and uh, this is another thing that I harp on all the time, is I really want to see a better stage builder. Yes. I feel like this stage oh builder. Gosh, don't even get me started. It star- it, don't it took, even get me started. It took on like stage one building. step forward with being able to draw it, and then like two steps back by removing all of the fun stuff from Brawl. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's, there's, okay, there's, this is all I would need out of stage builder, and I don't feel like it's a lot. You have the stage builder we have now, right? You add from Brawl conveyor belts, ice, ladders, all of that stuff, okay? And then you make it so that your backgrounds, you can just use the different Omega backgrounds or Omega platform. So you could start off with like the Wiley Omega stage, or you can start off with, you know, what, whatever uh, Omega stage that you, you want, um, Umber clock tower. And then you can add stuff to it. So you'll just have like the final destination platform for different Omegas. And then you can add platforms to it if you want. And that way you have like a big variety of backgrounds and stuff. I think they should make it where you can unlock stage builder parts from yeah. different games. Like yeah. that would be cool actually. I would be perfect for the kind of Mario Maker things. parts. Like you know all this, all the stuff they added with the Mario Maker stage. Why can't we use that in Stage Builder? Actually, I feel like the next stage though <laughs> should be more like Mario Maker. To be honest, I think that that system worked yeah. out really well. Even if it's it, it, you'll have more simplistic design rather than the whole drawing thing. But I don't think that worked that well. Like it's hard to get like just flat ground in the Stage Builder. It's my worst thing. That'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, if they did a uh, like separate game almost. Maybe like a twenty dollar DLC game, just called like Smash Maker. Right? You can actually make good Smash. <laughs> you should sell a full stages. retail sixty dollar game that's Nintendo Stage Maker, <laughs> and it's for every Nintendo nah, nah, it's, game. It's twenty bucks. You're like, you want to make a Mario bucks. Kart level? You have to buy this game first. You want to make a Smash level? You have to yeah. buy this game. First. But I mean, I feel like that's a good idea. Almost like they re-released it on Smash and X. Like, you can was, import um, your own stages. Was it Mario Artist for the sixty four Mar- DD? Uh, I don't know. Like Mario Paint? Talent Studio. Was there? Don't nope. like they um they all connected to each other. Like through the Mario oh, artists. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Like that was an idea that they just never really got a chance to explore. Nobody liked this track. Yeah. Uh, but Omni, were you talking about like the games having like connectivity with other games? Um, no, not necessarily. Though I one thought I did have is maybe you could I know Amiibo's probably gonna be something that Nintendo keeps around for a while. So yeah, the- maybe maybe stage builder content could be unlocked through amiibo i don't know if that's something that people would like i know a lot of people don't like the idea of the model of unlocking content with an amiibo but that's an idea yeah for me it depends on like what kind of content like if it's like um superficial like if it's just like looks then that's okay but if it's like actual like good content or something like that then i don't like it being unlocked through the amiibo. yeah i feel like that that would be a good use of amiibo though but you can maybe get it separately as well 
But I want to make it clear. We'll just sort of mention that this started out as a was the DLC worth it discussion. It's quickly evolved into was how's the stage builder going to work in the next uh, discussion. So, On that topic, though, uh, the DLC, uh, how, how do you guys feel about the fact that they're not going to do any more patches w- right after Bayonetta and Corrin came out? I'm actually very worried about that. Yeah, I'm pretty worried. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned about it because they should have. I think they should have planned for one more patch after that yeah, DLC because they don't have the test base until they release it so they should do one more I think one of the one developer song came out and they said we get more information from the first 30 minutes of a global release than we do after 6 months of closed testing so- even Sakurai said that in defense of DLC <laughs> yeah <laughs> like in one, uh, one of his newest columns he did talk about like how like um, supporting the game after launch like that's one of the benefits is that they can catch a lot of these bugs. Yeah, I know there's another example too in another game. Um, in in StarCraft that happened a lot. StarCraft Two that happened. They had this huge beta to test everything. They made a ton of patches in there, and in the end, what happens is the minute the game releases, they found out. Oh, well, it turns out siege tanks are ridiculous and Terran's OP. So they had to kind of start tweaking some stuff. So the problem is you're never going to catch things in there because you need exactly as you are saying a global perspective or even a regional perspective to see what actually works and what doesn't. And that's kind of the issue I think with Bayonetta right now is I'm sure they didn't expect the zero death thing that she can do. Well, I, I hear that zero death thing isn't actually even uh, a legit issue because it's... Yeah, ESAM says you can DI on Right. It. That's the other thing too is that there, it's good to have at least a cooling off period because I think there's so much, so much crying of this being OP or that being OP and a lot of it isn't actually true. A lot of it is just people not learning how to play against it and crying for patches. Because you look at Melee, and the tier list for Melee is still changing. You know what I mean? Not by terrible much. I think it's yeah. the top character is a little top. Like, that game's a little bit more poor. Dude, look at, look at Melee each year. Still- look at Melee each year, and it's weird that they'll find yeah, a new it's character. True. Amza got Yoshi up by, like, two whole tiers. It was incredible. And he says he wants to work on Roy now, too. So we'll see what happens with that. The bigger thing is bugs. And uh, I don't think Bayonetta really has any. I think Corrin has quite a few, though. Yeah. Corrin has a ton. Because Corrin was probably the last character added. (laughs) Maybe. It seems that way. It does seem that way. Because even the key, as he mentioned it, because he mentioned that we wanted to add a character from a new game. It seems maybe I'm wrong. I have to go back and look at that whole presentation. Well, no, that's what he says um, that he wanted to add a new a character from. Yeah, the he, game. and he was added, and and he's, I mean, he's literally the last slot there, so you would assume so. In the in yeah. ordering that he was the last the character. Um, I don't know. I I, I like Corin. Um, I do. Yeah, I do. It, it's an interesting character. I still would have preferred Elma, and I think that we don't have we don't have too many characters that kind of fit that archetype of you know just like um, heavy kind of quick projectile characters. We don't have too many of those at the moment. I think that's more useful of a character type but you know whatever like i said i, I like corn i'm nothing nothing against that character there just may be characters that i would have preferred that's all <laughs> all right for the last section of the podcast we've got questions from fans we asked you guys to give us comments on source gaming's website as well as on twitter and so we got our first question from Al- alan wilkinson who says would you who would you then like to have as dlc serious or silly or both i guess he's assuming if there was more dlc who would we like to see yeah um, well, for me, I really want to see Rayman, of course. But other than Rayman, uh, I think Inkling is like a a really safe bet for a character that should be in Smash. And I think I'd I'd be really interested in seeing how they actually implement a character whose mechanics are mostly about shooting in a Smash game, where it's about platforming and and melee. So yeah, I totally agree with that answer. By the way, um, but the thing with Inklings is. Not only that, but I think things would be super interesting to see because you have the ink mechanic. Like, would they be able to sink in the ink? Would they be able to recover straight to the ink if they like? Would you have recovery spots on stage? Would you be able to? Would there be like stage control? Would your your ink stay on stage? Like, there's there's so much, and I'd like to see inkling. I mean, I guess they said what ser- uh, serious versus silly. I guess they're saying more like oh. serious or silly. Oh, serious or silly? I, more cartoony or not cartoony? Like, if you had any choice, like nine vote for me, for example. Oh, okay, like a serious choice or like, I mean, Bomberman, one hundred percent, is a character I want to see. The uh, Bomberman and Simon Belmont. I've said my two bo- most wanted are are made by Konami, so that's sad for me. Um, but I think they'd both be super interesting. As far as first party, like uh, Inkling all the way. 
and also Toad. I'd like to finally see Toad. That's mine. Yes, that's Captain thank Toad. Because he is the best. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I totally agree on Captain Toad. I think he needs to be in. I think I, with Captain Toad, you finally have potential for a move set, and I think he deserves to be in. Man, he just do Toad. He needs Toad for that. I think for a silly character, uh, I really want. I don't actually know how you say the name, but is it Goemon from uh, Mystical Ninja? Ah, uh, yeah, Goemon. I want him. Is there another <laughs> Konami character? Konami, man. Kon- I told you. Mm-hmm. Check out, we're, we're going to put this in the information, check out the Konami Dream roster because I would play as any of those characters in the Smash Brothers game. <laughs> I never grew up with Konami, dude, because I, I can't really tell you guys. I've never played Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid or anything like that until I was older. So Here's the deal. Konami back like in the NES and Super NES days and the Genesis, like in the 16-bit and 8-bit days, Konami was, I feel like, just as big as like Capcom. They had so much licensed stuff and so many like interesting and cool IPs. And then in the like 32-bit era and beyond, they were very important for Sony for like two generations, and then they kind of tapered off. So if you're younger, and especially if you're younger and a Nintendo fan, you're not going to have as much of a connection. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? I but they have ah oh, wonderful like Konami and Sega probably have like my favorite like overall ips i don't know i mean obviously i love nintendo a lot too um but there's so many like just a wide wide berth and variety anyways i will say that just to kind of go ahead real quickly i would have liked to, for me personally i'd like to have seen more first party characters because again it's kind of why i play nintendo as uh, oh, smash Bros. for nintendo so really uh, besides like wolf or anything because i like, agree with everyone else does it's it'd be cool to see maybe something that was like really far out there or could never could be in smash it was like a first party character, something like just crazy ridiculous. I thought that might have been a kind of cool and interesting. It's just kind of neat. Like a crazy ridiculous first party character that'll never get in Smash. You mean like Isaac? Oh, yeah, oh, Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in fairness, so there are fans like it because one of the uh, looking at the Smash Fight YouTube, that's one of their most popular. Your guys' most popular videos. It looks like it's Isaac one. Really like I, dude, I wanted Isaac, but like the more that gets introduced to Smash, the less likely he seems. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It's been a while. It's been a long while. And it's like, it's like, can you imagine if like they introduced him like right after they introduced Cloud? It would have been like, yay! It would kind of been the same because he's a lot like. Well, it's the fact that Isaac's so different. They look kind of similar to hair. At least. Well, I mean, they, they, he would play completely different. But oh, yeah, it's just kind hair. of like like one of the most iconic like JRPG protagonists of all time. And Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love Golden Sun, by the way, and I, I, I am kind of an Isaac supporter. It's just, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess we can move on to the next question after that, which is from Ike? Ike? Maybe. Ike? Ike. Ike. All right. Maybe. If it's Japanese. So Ike, how do you, how do you Omni, feel about the way you went about the Rayman leak? Do you think people were just going to be angry at you? I was one of them for a while, LOL, but I've come to terms with my destroyed dream after a while. So that's just a question for Omni. That's uh, a good question, and it's one I think about often. <laughs> um, I, I do think people were completely justified in being angry, and uh, I think it's a hard question to answer because the way I went about the Rayman League resulted in me being able to do Smashified at the scale that I'm currently doing it now. And if I had done it a different way, who knows what could have changed like it's what I what I did with the Raymond League afforded me some really cool opportunities that uh, I don't know if they would have happened if I did do it a different way so I'm happy that things turned out the way they did do I think I could have gone about it a different way to create less uh, anger with people yes but I don't know if that would have resulted in <laughs> uh, Smashified being as big as it is and, th- and that's part of the hard things about it is is it bad to say that the end justified the means or like was what I did bad Mm -hmm. Uh, it's hard to say for me because on one hand I feel like it got Rayman a lot more uh, buzz as as far as the ballot goes I wonder if it did actually boost the amount of votes for Rayman or not but I don't know it's really hard to answer I do think in the long run, it's sort of hurt my relationship with some people that w- might have been fans of Smashified had I done it differently. But uh, overall, I'm happy that I did it. I'm just not happy that people were upset by it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think that it created like buzz and the way that you did it created the most buzz. And that's like the best thing because like yeah I, I, in the end smashified is not is not like a terrible thing like smashified deserves to exist smashified is great um like so i don't 
I think, you know, I can understand why people are, are upset or angry, but in the end, we got this cool product out of it. Yeah, and not only that, we had – it was such a boring time in Smash Speculation. It really gave us something to do for two days. <laughs> like, I thank you for that. It was so boring for a while. Like, between Mewtwo and Lucas, ugh, awful. <laughs> yeah, speaking of questions for Omni, we have one from a big fan, big listener of Source Gaming named Push Dustin, who asked, what art direction <laughs> would you take the series? That's directed That's towards question. Omni. Um, it would probably have been a more interesting answer after Brawl than it is now because I didn't really like the way they made Brawl sort of gritty and dark. But then Wii U sort of took a, a lighter direction, and I really like the way they did the Wii U version. So I don't know that I'd really do anything drastically different from that. Like, I did have thoughts about maybe taking a more stylistic approach with, like, sort of what they do with some of the Marvel versus Capcom stuff where they try to make it look like a comic book or something like that, something more hand-drawn. But I imagine that wouldn't sit well with a lot of people. So if it was really up to me, I probably wouldn't do something too far off from the Wii U version. I think we can all agree that the art style for Smash 4 is really great. Like it just comes yeah, the best. Really well. They, they really hit imagine. the sweet spot with the color for sure compared to how um, how Brawl looked. Yeah. And so we got two more questions, both directed towards all of us. Is that all from Warcel Der Best Day? Is that French? Maybe? I think so. German? I don't know. Okay. He asked all of us, what was your first experience with Nintendo slash the internet and Japanese culture? That's like three, what? three <laughs> like questions. Three questions. <laughs> I, I know. I mean, which one do you want to know? I guess I could, I could start. Um, my first experience with Nintendo was... Uh, when I was like five or six, I got an SNES, and the uh, first game I got from my parents was Killer Instinct for some reason. So oh. <laughs> I was a five-year-old playing Killer Instinct. <laughs> but uh, uh, first experience with the internet, and I think that's a more interesting question, is uh, I used to do a lot of sprite editing uh, in MS Paint as a, re- as a result of playing Sonic Adventure 2 Battle on the GameCube. So I started getting into all these <laughs> message boards about people doing artwork, and then I found DeviantArt and things like that. And I, was, I think I was 12 or 11 when I found uh, all those crazy message boards. Do you guys remember Game Talk? That was a, a message board way back in the day. I do. I do remember I think that. that was the first game blank. Yeah, com. I think that was the first message board I ever participated in. But yeah, I guess I have Sonic to thank for me being a digital artist. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? I, I mean, am twenty four. So I'm. Oh, okay. That's what I was like. DVR in like middle school. Like, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so I I get I'll, I can answer next. Like, well, Japanese culture only. How are you introduced to Japanese culture? Um, I mean, I guess Japanese games from Nintendo. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah, that's me as well. So I'll I'll answer. I guess with Nintendo, my first experience was my cousin gave me a Nintendo sixty four that he was done with for like my birthday or something and it came with a couple of games and that was really that that was sort of my first experience with Nintendo I would think I think I had a Game Boy before at that point as well but I, that was my main experience because he brought Pokemon Stadium and that was where I got super excited with the internet I think it was probably first I can remember is when I was younger I think Pokemon 2000 was coming out and I was super excited for the second Pokemon movie and I saw something that you can watch the trailer online or learn about the movie online. And so I was like, Mom, I need to go online to see this. Because back then, well, I think they probably still do. They're like, ask your parents permission before going online. And so I went and asked my parents permission before going online. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I saw the trailer and I was very excited. And I think that was sort of the start for me. And then Japanese culture, I mean, probably Final Fantasy Seven. Okay. Well, for me, um, I had a Game Boy uh, since I was like five or six. I had a uh, Super Mario Land, which I could never beat as a young kid. Um, I'd often give it to my mom, and she would try to beat it for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my first actually home console experience was I was uh, hospitalized for like a month or so because I had uh, a kidney surgery, and so I played a uh, Super Nintendo for the first time there um, in the hospital. Then um, for internet, um, I started out in AOL chat rooms. I was uh, I role played some pokemon uh, when i was a kid <laughs> some sexy sexy pokemon uh no no sexy time <laughs> We'd, um i was i role played a mew i think 
actually, thinking back on it. Um, and then I got quickly exposed to the horrors of the internet, like Gotzi and stuff like that at a way young age. Um, and then for Japanese culture, I did karate when I was younger. Um, I did it for about like, I think 10 years or something like that. Um, so that was that. And then also the Pokemon cards. I enjoyed correct, collecting the Japanese versions of the cards because I thought they looked cooler. So Spazzy, what was yours? I'm a little bit older than uh, most of you guys here. Um, so the internet, uh, I, I remember when the internet was a thing and we had like dial up CompuServe and dial up uh, America online. And um, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I just kind of grew up with the internet and the internet kind of grew up with me. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So I kind of like saw, saw it become the thing that it was. Um, interesting thing. And I remember when we had Ash Paulson on and we both like, this is a shared experience that we both had. Um, I was a big fan of Final Fantasy on the Super Nintendo. I remember uh, Final Fantasy um, 64. The, uh, when they had, they, they had the video for Final Fantasy 64. And like you couldn't see it, like you'd write, read in your Game Pro magazine or whatever. Oh, go to our website. So you'd have to like do like dial on AOL and spend like overnight download, keep your phone line on, and download like a thirty second video, yeah, <laughs> in order to see it in, in horrible quality. But I needed to do that because I needed to see what it looked like, and it was amazing. And I went back and watched it on YouTube recently, and I'm like, man, that looks awful. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> at the time, amazing. Um, for gaming, I had, uh, okay. I guess before, even before that, my, uh, my aunt had an Atari 2600 and my brother had an Intellivision. So like at a very, very young age, I kind of remember those a little bit, but my first video game system, I guess was around five was the NES, um, with Super Mario brothers and Rob and Gyromite. Um, I got the whole package. It was pretty sweet. Um, and that was, that was it. That was the really what I remember. The original Super Mario Brothers was such like a mind blowing game. And it's kind of really silly to think about it now. But like, if you think about most of the games that people were playing before they played Super Mario Brothers, like especially on home consoles, they were just like, like, it was just like amazing that you could see like, Hey, this is a person. He's got a mustache. This is what he looks like. He's doing stuff. Like there's, that's obviously actually a turtle, not something that kind of looks like a turtle. It looks like a turtle. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, my, like, so I, I also, I guess, um, have been with Nintendo for a long time since they've been doing home consoles. So I've been, uh, I've also seen, I guess, both Nintendo and the internet that makes me seem super old, um, <laughs> become kind of what it is. And what's funny is, as far as Japanese culture, a lot of it comes from video games, um, yeah. especially like JRPGs, because those are always so, uh, Japanese because there's so much text in them, you know? And so much story that there's always going to be stuff like that that uh, kind of comes through. I remember like liking anime, especially when I was really young, when there was like really nothing to watch as far as anime. Like you'd have to really try to find it. It was it was not easy. It'd be like I could watch Sailor Moon. I guess that was one of the only things that was around. Ronin Warriors, a couple other things, and then like slowly like Sci Fi Channel came around, and they'd have like anime on saturdays like you know you'd watch like armitage three or this or that and then you'd go to blockbuster and they'd have like a tiny section for anime that you could rent um so it was, it was a lot more difficult to uh to kind of get into it what's funny is i totally rented and watched the fire emblem anime like back in the day and i didn't even realize it till like a couple years ago <laughs> That that was the same thing as Fire Emblem. I'm like, oh, it's because his name wasn't Marth. It's because they called him Mars, mm-hmm. and like it was something yeah. I rented once and once and thought was okay. It's not like it left like a huge mark on me. But I'm like, oh, that is totally that game. That's that anime. Cool, I guess. <laughs> so when I was talking about like internet stuff too, that I remember is I remember around like when I was looking at the Pokemon trailer. I mean, that was around when a uh, Halo One came out, and I used to look up competitive gameplay of that because I wanted to see how good people could be. And I remember specifically that the hate that, uh, if you guys know Rooster Teeth, the Rooster Teeth guys, they started a web series called red versus blue. And I would go on to see that on their, on their site. And that's still running today. I love those guys. How about you, uh, smash Chu? I really, have, let's say, uh, so my first experience with Nintendo was probably playing it with my cousin. I played Sonic the Hedgehog and I think Donkey Kong country. I think it was either Donkey Kong Country or Super Mario World, I don't remember. 
for the internet. I did actually use, I did message boards too when I was like 13, 14. But back in dial up, actually, we still had dial up. And it was like some role playing form for Smash Brothers. You could be like any Nintendo characters. And I just love Smash Brothers, so I kind of talked about it. I didn't remember what it was called. Um, and then I guess for Japanese culture, it's just kind of the same thing. I haven't really watched a lot of anime either. Like, uh, probably the most I would watch is, um, Adult Swim when I was like, like in high school. Like, I could stay up all night and watch Adult Swim and play a like, Game Boy or something. Um, Oh, yeah. So probably my biggest exposure Man, to Cowboy anime Bebop that. really is still the best. I just want to say that. I've never actually really seen Cowboy <laughs> Bebop. Really? Oh, man. I just, it probably wasn't on. I just never really cared about it. I think I've seen a little bit of it, but I just never really cared for it. I don't know. For me, whatever. But yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Something like that. And so, yeah, for our last question, this was specifically requested by um, Smash to himself. It's a question that says, have you ever watched series like Seinfeld and King of Queens? <laughs> um... I've seen Seinfeld. Um, I, I really well, like remember, Seinfeld. Remember, if you haven't seen either of those, just before we get in, if you, but you've seen series like them, you can, uh, which I assume would be, I don't know, Friends. Uh. <laughs> Dude, I was huge on Friends. I, I was obsessed with Community. Community is an awesome show. show. Would you count The Office as something like that? I mean, it's a sitcom. Yeah. It's, it's kind yeah. of a different style. The Office is one of my favorite shows of all time, so yeah, for sure. This question is only one degree away from have you ever watched television? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> what's, what's your experience with television? Well, I remember from a young age <laughs> watching <Yeah>. television. <laughs> I remember turning it on. So if you guys want to see more quality into the podcast, be sure to actually ask uh, some good questions on Twitter <laughs> about our opinions. Oh, there was one question that was uh, asked during the break. Uh, favorite color? Yes. Uh, <laughs> mine was hexadecimal code 0047AB. So look that up. That's a classic one. Wasn't that your uh, Smashboard screen name or whatever? Hexa Duplu. No, Hex Duplu dot is a uh, is a totally different. I don't even know why I came up with that username, <laughs> but yeah, no, <laughs> that's totally unrelated. You know, we didn't talk about uh, almost at all. Omni were, were uh, your Brawl era uh, leaks. You mean like the Kirby hats and yeah. and Bomberman and stuff like that? Yeah. That was a good Bomberman. A lot of people don't realize you're the same dude that did the Brawl Bomberman. I didn't realize that because you actually did. I remember seeing those circling around during Brawl. I never thought who made them. And the Galactonite, right? Yep, the Galactonite. There was a Geno render that I did. I did uh, the Kirby Hats, of course. So, yeah. I've, whenever I change my my Twitter name to HexDupu, somebody goes, oh, that was you? Ah, oh, interesting. <laughs> that all makes sense now. So, I guess what this all comes down to is Seinfeld Smashified went. Oh, God, you should do that. Um, That'll be... 2017. <laughs> Here's what you do. You do it for B movie, right? His best creation. I'm holding you to that now. I'm writing it down. 2017. All right. But I'm just gonna say a podcast so. did result in the case for Gex. The only reason it exists is because we talked about it during a podcast for like ever. <laughs> so I'm just saying I want to see Seinfeld smash it. I want to see him in smash. <laughs> case for Seinfeld. And for the record, since I didn't answer it, yes, I, I am a fan of Seinfeld. Uh, yeah. Not so much the King of Queens. Uh, do like Seinfeld. Actually, currently rewatching it on Hulu. Uh, on season four. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds good for questions. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching SourceCast number eight. Special thanks to our special guest, Artsy Omni, for coming on from Smashified. Omni, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, sure. Well, obviously, there's Smashified, which is uh, the team collaborative project that we've been working on since uh, one year today. So there's that. You can check that out on YouTube. I'm on Twitter at Artsy Omni. There's also a Smashified Twitter. Uh, I'm going to be doing my personal channel sometime this year, sometime near the start of this year. So look out for that. It'll be youtube.com slash artsyomni. And I think that's pretty much it for me. So yeah, thank you guys for having me on. It's been really fun.